not. I'm trying. Right. Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode 403 of 10 O'Clock. I am MDR Laws. This is Zeno Gellion. Hi. And a special guest we have this week who was recommended to us by one of our viewers of Joseph Grospener. We have Nick from Two Star Players. Hello, Nick. Oh, all the way over from Sweden. Oh, Sweden. Nice, nice. Yeah, nice. yeah, yeah. Nice to be here. All right. It's lovely to have you here. We will, uh, so if anyone does else have any recommendations of people they want to see on, just recommend it. We read every comment. Well, I read every comment before we start the next episode. Right. So. Lars is pointing out I can't read. And, and I'm already old news. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what's Gotta the keyboard doing down there? I don't oh. know what the key was doing down there. It's However, <laughs> at this point in time, you're going to turn on uh, meme number 10. Uh, am I? Yes, you are. Oh, okay. There we go. Meme number 10. Decided. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Oh. There you go. That's me. Good I'm shot. meme number 10. Yep. Sorry, it's, it's just that we haven't rejiggered the deck board thing. It's not meant to be. You get the point. You're not a so, meme. <laughs> you're not a meme. Uh, unless you want to be. But tell us about this picture. Nick, go on. Uh, yeah. Uh, so, like, I, I think like 99% of the people who come to our channel <laughs> currently uh, come for the Warframe content. Uh, but uh, I'm the one doing the Warframe content. So most people only know uh, me from the channel. But hey, it's called Two Star Players for a reason. Because there's two of us. And it's, it's a pun. Because, hey, it's either we're two star players or, or we're... You know, two star ah players. Ah, it's, see, it's a play on words. Uh, but it's both me and my girlfriend. We are running the channel together, and and uh, we have been since the very start. It's just that she uh, she can't play Warframe. <laughs> She's. I think it's the thing that like Warframe's biggest strength is also Warframe's biggest weakness when it comes to her, and that is the the movement. Ah. Yeah, she just she she can't. She just gets sick if she tries to play Warframe. And I've always wondered, like, I, went, I wonder how many that goes for. I wonder how many people can't get in to Warframe because of the movement. I do know that there, there have been a number of people that have said to me, like, I just can't follow it because of the motion sickness. Mm. So I can understand that. So you say you both started this channel together. How old is the channel? Uh, the channel is a bit over three years old now i'm gonna say i think we started it in uh was it 2018 yeah i think so uh june 16th 2018 was when we put out the first couple of videos on the channel um so you know kind of depending on how you count it it could be a baby in youtube terms or 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 old veterans who knows who knows and it was like i think it was about maybe a year in or something like that when i started making warframe content on the channel um and then you know that i guess that's just what blew up mm. so mm. It, it didn't start as a warframe channel it's like that was never the intention from the start that i was going to have like a warframe channel it started as a project just a hobby project with me and my girlfriend and something that we could do together because we're both gamers and and it was just um we were inspired by other channels that came before us and, and I just felt like I wanted to do my own thing as well and, and she was along for the ride and, and uh, we've been putting out videos pretty much every day since. Let's go to number 11. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. I was going to ask a question, but all right. <laughs> well, we can ask the, you can ask the question now. I was going to ask what, what draw you to Warframe? Um, I don't even remember. What? I don't even re you must yeah, remember. No. <laughs> I don't even remember why I started playing Warframe. I think it might have been there. There was a best uh, a let's play channel that came before us. It called uh, Super Best Friends Play or Two Best Friends Play. Yes, um, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember. Uh, main main inspiration for me for for starting my own channel. That I modeled uh, like the channel after after them and stuff. And uh, one of those guys, Pat, one, one one of the people in that group, I know he plays Warframe, and I think I watched him play Warframe on some Twitch stream or something. Thought it looked kind of interesting, and for some reason, like had had an opportunity to to jump on it myself later, and just didn't get hooked initially. Started playing it, played it for a little while, thought like meh, <laughs> and then and then. A couple of months later, for some reason, I just went back into it, and then I just got hooked immediately. Hmm. 
do you remember what update it was that you were playing? I think it was around the sacrifice. I think right, it's okay. Somewhere around there. Yeah. I, yeah, it's gotta I be. Like that, yeah. Cool. And then this screenshot. Yes. Uh because like I said, we it's not a Warframe channel that we have. Uh, it is. It, it started as a variety channel, and we've like we played so many different games, like from start to finish. And most of these are like almost all of them are me and Anna mm. uh, playing mm -hmm. together. It's just kind of Warframe. That's that's just me. Um, so so I always try to like whenever people. I, I know that people show up at the channel right now because of the Warframe stuff. I know that's what's pulling in the viewers. But I always mm. try to like just make people sort of take an interest in the other stuff as well. Um, but some of it can be like a hard sell. Like if you if you if you take something like Hot to Full Boyfriend, the the, <laughs> pig, the pigeon based yeah. dating simulator, it's like trying to get someone to watch that now and be like, oh yeah, no, it's it's like eighty two episodes of Japanese pigeon based visual novel. But <laughs> but at the same time, it's like it's some of our proudest content. It's like some of our best content. It's just. It's so funny. I'm so um, I'm so angry at myself because I know that I will never again sort of recreate the level of comedy that we have in in that particular let's play. I can go to any episode in that entire thing and any part and go to any goddamn timestamp and just start laughing at listening to myself. It's, it's crazy. Um, it was just ah. Uh, but I can't get anyone else to watch it. <laughs> you know what? The marketing, the, the sales pitch right there. You've piqued my interest. If you are that <laughs> enthusiastic mm. for, you know, I'm going to give it a go. I'm, I'm going to, yeah, that is, totally going to watch is, this. That is amazing. Um, that was actually my sort of first foray into podcasting in a way, because that LP, um, halfway through it, it basically turned into a podcast. Uh, it's just me and Anna sharing live stories and, and chatting about whatever and occasionally clicking buttons and moving the dialogue forward. <laughs> I think there's like, I think there's one episode in there where we don't actually click on a button for like the entire episode. Wow. It's just us talking in front of a blank screen for, for 20 minutes or so. It's great. It's <laughs> our greatest content. <laughs> See, I can't even, I can't sell it. I can't sell it in a way where I'm going to make anyone watch it. It's impossible. It's almost so like you've what, hidden it. You've hidden your best content behind a pigeon simulator. <laughs> yes. I mean, I got to be honest. Like the the game on this screenshot. That I mean, the fact that yourself, myself, and Lars are currently covering up at least three of them. Um, the game that I'm really surprised that's in this list is actually Giants Citizen Kabuto. Because mm -hmm. <laughs> I remember playing that, Man, and it's got like some of the jankiest game engine stuff in there. What's but the comedy, the humor? I know, it's so British. It's so yes, it is just <laughs> so British. It's so funny. <laughs> yeah, no, that that was uh, that was Anna's thing. She grew up on that game because apparently, and I never knew this because I'd never heard of it before. Apparently, it was sort of big in Germany. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Who knew? Who knew? Yeah. Now, Anna's from Austria, so like, ah. that, that's our thing. We, we come from different countries. But, uh, but yeah, she, she uh, showed it to me, and I started playing it, and I was like, oh, oh, this is like Star Siege Tribes. Or, or like, I guess it was like the, the precursor to it, because this is older. Mm. Mm. Um, yeah, fantastic comedy. Can't do that sort of comedy today. <laughs> a lot of jokes in that one don't, wouldn't fly today. And and quite a lot of nudity that we had to sort of like edit out at times. <laughs> yeah. Um, oh God, what was the... the there's one, uh, the Overlord franchise. So Overlord 1 and 2. Right. Uh, Codemasters. And yeah, that again, very British sense of humor that's a good game i imagine you can get it on steam for quite cheap right now but yeah i do recommend that one i should i love british humor yeah uh, uh, i just I, I just went through a like, like a binge of just reading uh the it's not comedy really but like the boys comic book uh mm -hmm. just based on the tv show and um i don't know it, it's written by a british person so like just all the characters are written to have British accents. And it's so yeah. weird when you read it and you create this British accent in your head when you're when you're reading like the dialogue lines. And I'm like, I'm probably doing like a terrible British accent in my head as I'm reading this. 
Right, uh, Loz, do you have any questions? Uh, you should play Hogs of War. <laughs> if you want an That's old... not a question. No, but it's like, if you want an old British game, I can't remember who was it who did all the voice for it, though. Oh, God, it was amazing. It's basically... Hogs of War? Hogs of War, yeah, it was basically like Worms in 3D, but oh, it has... Oh, um... yeah. It was a PlayStation oh, God, it... game. Ah. Rick Mail. That's it. You've got Rick Mail oh. doing all the lines, and it is hilarious. He's, he's dead now, oh. sadly, but it's I know, amazing. you made me sad. <laughs> oh, no, but go, but, go, but go play Hogs of War and hear him say some hilarious lines, and you'll feel better. Brilliant. Old game, but good. Sorry, yeah, it's just humor and gaming. We don't get that anymore, though. Do we have any British gaming studios? Oh, yeah, we have a lot of British games. Yeah, but do they produce studios. British games, or do they just get told to make... No. <laughs> no. no I'm be. pretty... I'm pretty sure Crytek is primarily British. They do actually have other studios around the world. I think there's one in France and there's one in uh, Canada. But I think Crytek was primarily British to begin with. Ah. But yeah, like British British humour doesn't get picked up much more in games anymore. Very shame. Um, and then yeah, number 12. Probably 0, 1, and 2. I don't understand what uh, you Hey, now I was gonna say like now for the main event, right? No, but the yeah. the war the warframe stuff is obviously what people uh, come to the channel for, and that's why we're uh, growing. We're growing pretty fast right now. I'm gonna say, well, not 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 like them big shots on YouTube, them 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 kids like Dream who get like them 12 million followers. None, <laughs> none of that. Uh, but we're we're inching closer to 10,000 subscribers. Not nice. that far away from that, and. Um, and I'm gonna say that like stuff like this, uh, the the I put out close to it's over a hundred different just Warframe guide videos for various things, stuff oh. like roster reviews, stuff like uh, tips for new players, um, weapon build guides, uh, how to farm for various things, yeah. tons of stuff that's just sort of like um, Nightwave challenges where where I just there are people who want to know how to do some stuff and I I help them with that. Like the first, like, you have no idea how many people get the weekly thing on Nightwave and they're like, what the hell is a forward artillery cannon? <laughs> that, that, that one gets so many views. <laughs> what the hell is nice. a forward artillery cannon? Uh, it's in your railjack. That's how you destroy the cruise ships. A big gun at the front. Oh! Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that's I, like, I, destroy, I, destroy a cruise ship with your forward artillery cannon. And, and so many people are like, I, I, I don't know what that is. <laughs> <laughs> you see, like, yeah, if, if you mentioned destroy a cruise ship, I'd be like, ah, this is anything to do with railjack. Yeah. I still have um, no clue what it is. But I'm going to say that, that what I'm probably stand out the most with is the the helminth build guides that i started making around the time when heart of demos came out uh because i was just as soon as they announced the helminth system i was just like oh this is me this i'm gonna i'm gonna deep dive into this this is i'm such a theory crafter as, as a gamer so this is right up my alley and I want to find out ways of breaking the game if i can I already have i already had managed to create I got one thing nerfed based on a video I did. So um, um, I found that? out uh, I found out a way to break the game with Limbo, obviously, because that is how you break the game. <laughs> I, I found out a, a weird interaction with Limbo and and um, Tesla Bank, uh, or like the little Tesla balls that you get from from yeah. Um I figured out like the mechanics for how they they work is they they latch onto enemies and then. It has to be that they sort of snapshot what the enemy's current health is when they latch onto it. Right. And and then the Tesla bank augment is that when when an enemy who has a Tesla ball on them dies, then they explode and they deal their all the damage you dealt to them while the Tesla ball was on them. They deal that as an AOE explosion to everything around them. Uh -huh. That that's what it says that it works, but but that's not exactly how it works. Um, I think it just snapshots what the enemy's health is when it latches on. And then when it disconnects from the enemy, which normally happens when the enemy dies, then it just does that amount of health or that amount of HP as damage. Uh-huh. So, I think I see where this is going. So, <laughs> so, if you latch on, so if you latch on to someone, but then you figure out some way of forcibly detaching the Tesla ball, mm -hmm. then it, it does the, the explosion even though the thing hasn't died. Mm -hmm. And it does the explosion for 100% of that guy's health. So it kills oh him and everything around <laughs> him as well. 
<laughs> and I figured out that Limbo could do that with the Rift, <laughs> because when you use Cataclysm, you pull the enemy into the Rift plane, but the Tesla ball doesn't get pulled into the Rift plane, oh so, so it's forced to detach, and then it kills everything. So it thinks because... the mob is dead because the mob's in a different dimension. Yeah. And then... <laughs> <laughs> and, and the Warframe abilities, they pass through the rift, so the radial explosion hits everything on both sides of the rift. Oh dear. Uh, so so I've, I've, I, I created this combo, and it actually one-shots any enemy in the game up to the level cap. And wow. that got nerfed very fast. <laughs> How did you work that out? I, yeah. I, just, I was just testing helmet combinations left and right, and just whatever I could think of, I was testing it. And then I threw on Tesla balls on on Limbo, and I just suddenly noticed that everything started dying around me. And I want to know, what's this about? Why is this happening? And <laughs> and then just, you know, working at it until I sort of figured it out. Oh my lord. That's <laughs> insane. Yeah, I found out another fun one with uh, Garuda as well, where just like Reeve and Garuda, you can kill everything in the game too. Um, some of these is like I have one or two that I'm keeping to myself because if I actually were to make a video about it, it would get nerfed. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Um, but it's fun. It's a fun ho hobby, just coming up with helmet combination and making these helmet build guides. And and I've made a couple of them that have been, been quite popular. For example, Gloom Equinox. Gloom Equinox mm. is... is that, that ability was made for Equinox, not for, not for Sevagoth. It is... It shores up every single weakness that Equinox has, and it synergizes perfectly with Equinox's toolkit. It's it's a match made in heaven. Can you remind me what Gloom does? Because I remember thinking of this for Oberon. Yeah. Gloom, uh, it's an aura. It uh, makes it so all of your attacks have lifesteal inside of that aura, and it also slows enemies inside the aura. Um Equinox already has, and it's also like a drain over time ability. Equinox yeah. already has a bunch of drain over time stuff. If you're doing day form Equinox with like you're just doing the maim thing and you're just hurting everything around you. Yeah. Um, so not only are you hurting everything around you, all of those attacks also cause lifesteal now, which is where you're currently, you're always at max health because you're always hurting everything around you and draining health from mm -hmm. everything around you, like passively. You don't even have to do anything. And the cool part is that anything that gets within Equinox's day form aura or whatever, it gets stunned for a little bit mm -hmm. uh, as, as the slash procs start ticking in. And Gloom also makes it so that stun animation goes in slow motion, uh, which means that enemies are basically just stun locked. Yeah. They, can't, they can't move. They can't do anything. They can't shoot <laughs> at you. And, um, and Equinox also has you know, abilities that can make him her uh increase her own power strength so mm. you can just make the slow effect even stronger uh otherwise like equinox has always been a good damage dealer but way too squishy for steel path she just yeah dies immediately but not with gloom because you're just not getting hit because nothing everything is frozen in time around you and if you do take a single hit or whatever you're just constantly life stealing everything around you as well so you're kind of immortal almost Super fun. Damn. Also works against uh, Corpus Liches and Sisters of Parvos. They also get like stun locked. Lars, do you have any questions? I'm just staring at Gloom, being like, "Wow." I I just don't. I don't know. Maybe maybe it's got to. <laughs> I, I put 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 like helmet options in a bag and then put a, a list of Warframes in a bag and pull them out and have a go. Because I just don't get how people just think about Warframes like this anymore. For me, it's just like Excalibur. Yeah, I know, I know, but but this is I didn't I didn't before the helmet system came out. But right. this has just been this has upped my game so right. much, uh, just experimenting and theory crafting, and like you have no idea how much work goes into just a single helmet build guide. Like step one, scour YouTube, look at what's already been done <laughs> to make just not be a copycat and whatever. If someone's already done a video about a certain combination, then I don't want to do the same thing. Yeah. And then get a rough idea about what might work or whatever. Then you jump into the game, you level up that Warframe seven or eight times and you format seven or eight times and you throw in like an Umbra form or something. Scour over the wiki, learn how every single ability works, how everything interacts with everything else. Then you go into theory crafting, trying out the different helmet ideas you had in your head, seeing what works in practice, what doesn't. And if it's good enough and makes the cut, I'll make a video about it. So for every 
for every one of these Helmet build guides, there's like the five or six projects that I spent an entire week on that just didn't lead to anything. Hmm. Crazy. Absolutely crazy. <laughs> um, I know Lars had a question before we started recording. Hi. Um, yeah, it was uh, the Divide oh, series. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Was... <laughs> This is, no, no, I, I don't only do guide videos. I also do um, the occasional sort of just, I don't know, meta commentary piece. I try not to engage too much in that sort of stuff because I, I don't know. I don't know. I think most, most of the time when you talk about like sort of meta Warframe commentary, it has this sort of brand of negativity to it almost because the, the, the Warframe content creators who do sort of have that as their bread and butter tend to be more on the critical and, and negative side. And that's not me. That's not me. I'm, I'm always trying to have like a super positive outlook on everything. Um, but I did have an opportunity or like I felt like a sort of a creative sting to do something like that and uh, doing like a video series about uh, game design and just talking about different philosophies and how the Warframe community sees things certain ways and how the developers might see things certain ways and how there's a bit of a disconnect there and like um some of the problems or some of the grievances stem from the fact that the community and the developers aren't really sort of talking the same language and in many ways just are talking over each other's heads and that's where we're not really getting anywhere um but i did that video series when I was kind of sort of like a bit down and a bit lonely, actually, and, and it had some stuff in my private life going on and sort of like it felt like a nice thing to tap into. It was sort of like, a, I don't know if it was a distraction or if it was just like something I needed then. Um, I felt like now that I'm, I'm in a, at a much sort of happier place, I don't really feel the same sort of creative urge to continue with that. So I, I guess that's... I guess that's something I do when I'm feeling down or in a bad mood. I'm going to pick that series up again. Just like Warframe itself. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I, I, no, it's a bit of a joke, but I, I really feel when Warframe started and the developers were in a darker place with a company on the rocks, the game was so yeah. much more grimdark and, and like dire. But now that the game's doing well, I feel the game is just too happy, too bright and doesn't have that dire and grim... Oh, it was amazing. We, we we did a thing where we watched an earlier video from like years ago, and every, the whole game is just dark and just dingy. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So no, channeling your emotion into what you're producing, I think, is very important. So yeah. So we so we might see that series continue in the future in the next content oh, yeah. drought, I assume. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's it's not it's not like I'm not done with that. I still okay. have a bunch of stuff I want to say. It's just I, I'm not feeling it right now. So I'm just yeah. gonna wait until I'm I feel it again, and then I'm gonna pick it up again. Yeah, makes sense. Right, oh, shall we wanna... move on with all the things, you know? Yep, so turn those off. Oh, yes, I've, oh, I've got to turn this off first. I was all prepped and I didn't have anything. Push that button first. Yeah. All right, big this. And right. then we're going to move on. To, yep, emblems. So, Nick. We have found given... two emblems from inside the game. That is the rule. So now, as the guest of this week, you may use whatever criteria you wish to decide the winning emblem of the week. I mean, uh, I, I'd like to think it's kind of obvious. I mean, I, I saw him, I saw them, and I was like, am I just going to be a contrarian? Am I just going to pick Xeno's find just for the hell of it when it's <laughs> obviously not... <laughs> it's obviously not the winner, but should I, should I pick it anyway just because? Because um, the other one with the, with the volcano on the, on the uh, atoll or, or whatever it is, with the... Uh, with, uh, it's Steven Scott, right? It's got to be. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's it's that is the best goddamn emblem I've ever seen. <laughs> I don't I don't see what could top that. Oh, I wish wrong. I could get a better picture of it, but the Loki's armor kept clipping right through it, so that's the best one I could get. It was. I hate it sometimes when you find someone at the end of a mission. We normally find people in relays where it's easy to get their arms, but that was at the end of mission. I'm like, no, no, fourth player, don't arrive, don't arrive, get distracted, <laughs> find a box. I need to get a better emblem picture. <laughs> Right. right. Well, if you wish to win 75 Platinum for your platform of choice, go into the description below where you'll find a link to this week's polls and uh, these emblems. So, you know, fill in the form and you'll automatically be entered in for your chance to win 75 Platinum, courtesy of Digital Extremes. And make sure you get your in-game name correct, because if it's wrong 
and DE say, hey, Zeno. Then we to the lab platform. So please make sure you get your in game name correct because that has happened more than once. <laughs> right. Okay, cool. So do you want to take the emblems away, Loz? Right. I mean, it's quite clearly Loz was going to win that one. Um, so moving on to Dojo Dusting. Yep. Um, I actually, I'm going to do a shout out, um, for an upcoming, I don't know if we've spoken about it on here, Loz, um, the anime podcast. You've mentioned you're going to be doing a podcast. You have. Yep. You don't so, do vlogs anymore. This is now your <laughs> vlog space, apparently. <laughs> While we're talking just, about Warframe. Uh, <laughs> well, anyway, if you like anime and you're interested, uh, on the, oh God. The 20th of August will be the first episode of a new anime-themed podcast featuring myself, Loz, and Nazareth. Uh, a lot of work, too much work potentially, has gone into uh, putting that thing together. Um, and yeah, I mean, some of that stuff could make its way back into 10 o'clock. But yeah, check it out. Uh, 20th <laughs> of... Why, why, why are you giggling to yourself? Oh, because, well, because we're Warframe on it, I'll take a dig at you of, <laughs> should Zeno continue doing the Warframe machinimas he complains he doesn't have time for? Or should he take the time he apparently doesn't have and make another podcast? <laughs> That's what I complain. There we go. But anyway, check out that if you want anime. Well, I'm sure we'll, when it's up, we'll, we'll link it everywhere. Anyway. Yeah. Cool. Uh, now on to the war report. Yeah, so what's happening in Warframe this week? So if people aren't aware, the Nightwave, the next Nightwave chapter, the intermission is over, everyone. We're now on to Nora's Choice, the next saga in the Nightwave sequence. And it's another intermission. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry, it's just an intermission. Uh, just with less Umbra Formers for once. Just, no, no, no. Oh, well. But then we've got a refresh list, basically, for now. I, I assume, basically, all effort is going on to the new war. They don't have time to come up with even a bare-bones story for this one, even though I'm sure the three of us could probably sit together for 10 minutes and come up with some very low-effort story that would be, you know, to, to go in a night wave. It doesn't have to be complex and have something, but I think they have scope creep every time they come up with a small concept, like the last one, it just keeps getting bigger and bigger. But, oh, well, we've got another night wave intermission, so everyone get back to grinding if you were done. There's always good stuff. But also, just to let people know, Prime Vault, Rhino Prime, and Nyx Prime are going to come out again on August 10th. Uh, that's going to be uh, obviously Nyx and Rhino, and I think it's got Boltor Prime, Hiko Prime, Sindo Prime, I can never remember the name of Rhino's Prime Sign Down, even though I wear it all the time. And the Targris armor set, that's going to be in that. And also Zephyr Prime and Chroma Prime are going to be going back into the vault. So if you want to get those, that's your last chance on those. So that's August 10th. This will think comes out on August 9th. So if you get if you listen to this on the day of release, most people do, then you've got one day to get that sorted. So that's all that's going on in Warframe at the moment because we're just sitting around waiting for the next dev stream, which when when will that be? <laughs> Anyone want to take some bets? <laughs> Uh, end of end August. Of month, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah. And I mean, I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be surprised if they even put out any new Nightwave challenges, and or if it's just going to be exactly the same as we've had now. Yeah. Because maybe it was like, oh, are you going to put out a challenge for like maybe it would defeat a sister of Parvels? I don't think so. I don't think we're going to get a single new challenge. <laughs> Is there ones that say defeat a lich? Yes. Uh, those Killer might get updated. Oh. They might be just, because it, it, it probably just is in the database. It probably counts them as the same thing anyway. So I bet those will just be updated. But there won't be separate ones for them, I doubt. Mm, they sh should. Should they, be separate yeah. ones. Yeah, they should be. But uh, like you're saying, I think this is just a reskin. <sighs> yeah. I mean, if, if you look at, if you go to Nora's radio and stuff like that, they didn't even get a new. Uh, icon for Nora's choice. It's still using the intermission icon. Oh, what really on the history list? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, come on. So <laughs> at it, least it, it did the last time I checked. It, was, it, it literally is intermission in all but name. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but like, I, Steve, Steve talked about it on dev streams where like the, the coming up with new stuff for Nightwave has become sort of like a bigger project than they thought it would be. I don't know. But, but it's um, their own fault. It, it doesn't need to be. The thing is, it could just be a small story, right? But they always try and add something new to it. Oh, we've got to have it have a final fight or a final mission. It doesn't, it doesn't need that. It literally could just be the bit where you have people attacking you each 
uh, weak and you just defeat them. There we go. <laughs> There's a new faction of uh, Grenier special forces and you just they just turn up in some of your missions and you kill them and eventually, yeah, you kill them all. There we go. No, no, no Wait. special summary and special boss, the special level. No, 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 just you kill them all. Well but on the flip side, then you could just like, yeah, but if it's going to be on that sort of basic level, then then why even why even have a story? <laughs> why not just do another intermission? <laughs> yeah, but oh, oh, it just put a, maybe a little bit of text, you know, that's all it needs. It doesn't, or a few voice lines, but they always go, oh, and then we need a boss level. Oh, and then we better have this new mechanic where you're scanning through missions. Oh, yeah, we better put this new thing with this new boss with three new weapons and a new operator skin. Like, just... <laughs> well, I, I I feel that when the question of like, oh, we'll shoot some audio lines in, oh, well, we might as well put a boss fight in. Just well. put a boss fight in. <laughs> oh, let's yeah. come up with new mechanics for that boss fight. Oh, let's make a whole new tile set for that boss fight. <laughs> I mean, if we didn't put in this scripted audio, do you reckon we wouldn't do any of this stuff? Yeah. So it's just scripted audio that's making us do this stuff. Yeah. Because the, for the for historic reasons, Nick, it's the same thing. They did something years ago called tactical alerts, which do occasionally pop up now and yeah. then. And that was supposed to be, oh, just a little bit of weekend content. Just, and the first one was literally just like, it's live. And you got a text thing about, I think, yeah. ghouls or something are attacking. And that's it. Just a box text. Went into the mission, killed them. Got another text in your communication email logs. You're like, wow. And I got an emblem. And then it was like, oh, so we're going to get these every now and then. And they might have a little snippet of lore about, you know, the ghouls or or the, the corpus or proxies or or something just very small just a little little text box a little bit of information and our emblem went up and that's fine that's all it would take and then they went oh but let's do this and let's put new units in and oh let's have some voice lines and it just went and then they just stopped doing them they always do this they're like let's come up with a new idea to make really small quick content for the game and then they just let it scope into just <laughs> astronomic levels and then they go oh there's too much effort to do that let's go focusing on updates and then they don't continue their small updates anyway anyway enough for that yes yes let's move on where are we up to on a, on a, a slight <laughs> tangent, on a slight tangent, um, would you say that the the wolf uh, of Saturn Six Hunt, yeah, is a tactical alert? The wolf of Saturn would... Six Hunt is a tactical alert. Yeah, this is what you mean with like based... wolf beacons and stuff. Yeah. Well, so, so basically, I thought, you know what, I'll just jump into the wiki and have a look at when the last tactical alert was. Yeah. And the wiki has stuff like Dog Days, um, Hallowed Flame. I don't know which one Hallowed Flame is. I think they literally just oh, count any event that's an event yeah. as a tactical alert, unless it's an operation now. I think that's how the wiki's doing it. Because it did get to the point that, like, Christmas thing... So some things are tactical alerts and do actually reward an increase in your status em stat Stratos emblem, and then some things yeah. don't. But sometimes they're called a tactical alert, even though they don't offer a Stratos emblem. Like, And then sometimes at Christmas, there was, like, literally just three missions, just, like, uh, each mission was go get... And you got a Christmas emblem or something, and they counted just as three separate Stratos emblems. Down, stuff like that. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. But they actually counted as individual Stratos emblems really? in hmm. one... Yeah, it was ridiculous. It, so they lost track of what the purpose of it was, and it was just, just bleh now. Mm. anything just bloody thing <laughs> i remember like th this was obviously a little bit before my time i'm i'm really a, a greenhorn in that regard because i've only been playing warframe for like three years or so uh so so that was after the tactical alerts or whatever ended but i, I remember the big complaint being or when i read read up about it um that it was just time gated it was like people didn't like the fact that like oh it's so easy to just miss out on it if you just didn't happen to be online when the when the alert mm. popped up yeah um so i don't know i don't know if i had a point with that just that i i like the idea the of they stopped yeah i like the idea of nightwave as a concept i like the idea of transferring it to to uh, to a more you can choose for yourself when you want to do it sort of thing mm. um but I don't, I don't know what the like, what what's the proper amount of effort you should put into it. If people are going to engage with it and just do it anyway, then I guess like just mission successful, right? Because mm. it might be that like Nightwave has probably been successful in just driving up player engagement, and it's it's also been like super important. I, I feel. I remember, like, when I started playing Warframe, that was like right when Nightwave first came out, season one of Nightwave. Uh, with like uh, Wolf of Saturn Six, I learned so much of the game from playing Nightwave. Uh, of just as a new player, even discovering all the different things that exist in the game, and like, oh, 
it says I should play night nightmare missions this week. What's that? And then I go and sort of like look that up and stuff. It's just uh, Nightwave was as a new player was effectively my tutorial in how to play the game. Right, so it was pushing you towards different aspects of the game yeah, that you weren't aware yeah. of. Oh, that's fair. That's fair. See, for for so I just just again to do an old school. <laughs> this is this is the third. I, I said obviously about uh, tactical alerts, and there's obviously Nightwave, but then this is the third attempt of them to put in a small small easy form content to add lore. The first one was the uh, you know Samaris and scanning. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. 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 The but that's the, just codex it, entries, right? It is, but originally it was like a whole community-driven event where he would say you must scan this mm. target, and there was like a bar, and everyone everyone had to contribute to leveling up this bar. And when you finished it, we'd got a special lore entry that would give us some story. And you can read those stories, and they're really good. They really yeah. allude to different things here and then. But I don't know if it's Steve. Or, we don't know if it's Steve who writes them, whatever. But it's clearly like. It, what happened is the first like three or four were fine and the fifth one we finished the bar but it took like two weeks for us to get the lore entry it said like processing because obviously they hadn't finished it and then the next one was even later and then they just gave up so it's like this is the third attempt of them to put like oh we'll just put some small easy content and just snippets of lore and then it always breaks down after a after a, a number of iterations it's just like oh they just mm. there's some there's some something in the design process that just always makes it fall to pieces we don't know what it is anyway we got we got a show to do you know this this is great but we've got to organize yeah <laughs> conversation yeah okay so <laughs> let's uh, we're yeah, professionals let's, let's, <laughs> let's um more short, fix this train back on the rails and move on to topics so god i thought i said 56 for a second oh so hang on a minute uh well, gonna pause. Go right. Yes, topics. They're updated. Yeah, I know what I'm doing. Yeah. <laughs> so, topic one: Cetus and Fortuna are the only places where I feel like a good guy. And topic two is modding Kuva weapons. So, back into the first Ooh. topic. Back in. Yep. Cool. Uh, Tenno are supposed to be secret ops vigilante heroes. And we certainly do a lot of cool missions, but they're rarely. But they rarely feel like. But they rarely feel like we're actually. They and we, oh brain, actually making sorry, but actually, but they rarely feel like we're actually making a difference, mm. despite the hate towards disruption. It's one of the few game modes that has someone other than the Lotus telling us what, uh, why we're helping. I'm not sure about that one. We're out there protecting their livelihoods against tangible villains and getting... Sorry, and the rewards are doing so... Or doing so. Or doing so. So my brain is just breaking. I'm going to slow down. I'm going to slow down. And the rewards for doing so come from the people we help instead of being a vaguely alluded to thing that happens to land in our inventory. I wish more of the game made me feel like a hero instead of being arcadey excuses to blow up things. Blow things up. Like no. I'm going to I'm going to go against <laughs> a bit the idea that that the warframes are heroes <laughs> because I don't th I don't think I don't think they are at all. Like, warframes are basically mercenaries where you just you you point them at something and that thing disappears. We never ask questions. <laughs> we never ask if 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 the people we're shooting are are guilty or innocent. They point the gun at the thing, we being the gun, and the the, the <laughs> thing stops existing and that's that's <laughs> sort of the point of Warframes. So, so of guns don't kill people, it's Warframes don't kill people, Tano. <laughs> do you have any idea how many of these Corpus crewmen are just a guy sitting down at the morning, having his morning coffee? Yep. And it's just, <laughs> hey, guess what? Your kids ain't gonna see dad tonight. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yep. It's the argument of like, oh, some of those stormtroopers on the Death Star were just innocent people doing their job. But no, they weren't. They knew what they were working at. They knew what the Death Star was. It's called the Death Star. The Death Star. They know what it's for. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but, um, but in this case, it's just, it's just Corpus guys. They're just like not all of them are Nef Anio. Not all of them are these like sort of hyper capitalistic like monsters or whatever. It's just some dudes, and this is their lot in life. We don't care. <laughs> but, in our way. 
<laughs> Saying that, we don't actually know the name of the Corpus ships we go on. I mean, we know they're like one's called a, the brand, like one's a Corpus Pillar. Um, I can't remember yeah, the name yeah. of the other one. <laughs> they might be like, this Corpus Pillar is called <laughs> Death Machine, and this one's called <laughs> Murderbot 20, 2000. It's like, okay, I'm being transferred over to the Murderbot 2000 today. No, like, no, it's got to be the Corpus thing. It's got to be like hostile takeover, stuff yeah, like that. <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Aggressive. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah. Aggressive takeover. Aggressive yeah. mergers. Yeah, yeah. Union buster. <laughs> Micro transaction. <laughs> oh dear, my oh. face. <laughs> oh god, it's good that it's digital. Right. Okay. I, <laughs> yeah. I I am in agreement. Like, since when are we heroes? Like, heroes don't murder people <laughs> right anti-heroes do sure but that's supposed to be the western definition between a hero and an anti-hero batman is all dark and brooding he don't kill no one wolverine he's wearing yellow spandex for some reason but he murders the crap out of people mm. right you know so i yeah no i i wouldn't re yeah i'm i'm in complete agreement and with... it's like the, the entrates like they're they're working. They're, they're they're a bit messed up in the head. But like you played that quest line, you saw what they did. We like ha ha ha. I I drowned all your animals as a joke. <laughs> like we are not working for the good guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well. Yeah. On a serious note, I would actually love it if there was a po if the post new war plot twist was that the sentience actually realized that the Orokins didn't know that the big threat is actually whatever's in the void and that's going to eat everyone so they thought hey we're not we're not actually coming to kill the Orokin we're coming to save the Orokin from the thing in the void they just misunderstood and it turns out that we're the bad guys all along <laughs> that would be good yep I kind of I kind of hate the, the the plot twist of like we're the bad guys all along that that being said I think there's something to that or rather I don't think I think the sentient are not gonna turn out to ultimately be the the big sort of big final threat and whatever they've been kind of clear on the fact that the new war has an end and the duviri paradox is supposed to come after yeah. new war so I, I think they're gonna move on to the man in the wall after the sentients are like just that's that story's over now my question for you though is you know again we were talking before uh we started recording and we were talking about um our interest in blizzard games and things mm. but like um i think your girlfriend would get this is it anna is that her yeah. name yeah anna i think anna would get this um more but like the fact that we end up fighting uh Aris in World of Warcraft. We we are literally fighting a fucking god, right? And I, oh, I, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I have to cut you off. I thought different. I thought you were gonna go in a super different direction. I thought you were gonna be like. So since we're talking about uh, turning out that oh, we're the baddies. Your girlfriend, being German, probably understands where I'm coming. No, I was gonna go that. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. Why would you go? <laughs> no, no, I'm not going down that rabbit hole. I mean, no. no my, 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 my point is that I thought she was Austrian. She's born in Germany, but moved to Austria at like two years old or something. <laughs> Regardless, same thing, same thing, same still, thing. still avoiding this <laughs> political quagmire. Um, my, my point is that. Personally, I would never want to fight Wally. I would never want to physically mm. encounter Wally. You know, Wally? if if oh sorry, the man in the wall. Yeah, it um, it's the forums Reddit term for the man in the wall. Ah, sorry, I keep forgetting that. Um, yeah, so I would never want to encounter the man in the wall um, in a combat sense. Maybe if the man in the wall ripped my Tenno out of the warframe to say, I'm bigger, more powerful than you, fuck off, and then flicked me to the side, sure, right? But I'd never want to fight the man in the wall. That's a power fantasy that is just beyond ludicrous. That's the that's the that's always the problem because in this case, like I don't think you can because I think the man in the wall isn't it doesn't have any sort of singular form or whatever. It it, it 
my theory is somehow that the void is kind of a mirror universe to our own universe because whenever anyone steps into the void it seems like they got them they meet themselves <laughs> but a different version of themselves um we'll we'll find out where they're gonna go with that but that seems to be a recurring theme we did it Albert and Trotty had the same thing experienced to where he didn't even know which one was the real one and which one was the, the mirror one. But um, um, that they're going to go somewhere with, their, with that. That's going to be a thing. But um, that's always a problem, right? When you introduce this sort of weird, not well, the Lovecraftian co cosmic horror thing, right? Don't show the monster. It's, it's only scary. The monster is only scary until you show it. And then you show it, it's just a big thing with tentacles and you shoot it with a gun and it dies. Yeah. And all the mystique is gone. And I don't know how they're going to like get around that, but clearly they, they can't have a traditional boss fight. I don't think that would work. Like, what, What's the point of that? Well, they could do it, but it would just be a big letdown. Yeah. Yeah. I want to see something different. I want to see what, like they did in Witcher 2. The Witcher 2 is the coolest game in, uh, in existence because you have the option to not have the final boss fight. Ah. Spoilers for a very old game. You have the option to just sit down and have a two-hour long conversation with the antagonist instead, and then you both agree that, oh, it's, it's super pointless for us to fight each other, so let's just not. Oh, yeah, you, the game can, ends. you can do that in Fallout. One or two? Yeah, you can just oh, if you great. have. Is it one? No, I think it's one. You can just convince the end boss if you have good enough, uh, you know, uh, conversation stats. Just be like, "Why fight?" <laughs> and they go, <laughs> "Oh yeah, that's a pretty bad idea." Yeah, I'll go with you. In fact, I think you can do the entire Fallout One without killing anyone, apart from I think you have to kill like a couple of rats or something at the start, and that's it. And then after that, you can just convince the entire game by just going, "Let's talk this out." And it's like, "Yeah, I'll give you that power armor." Yeah, I'll not fight these people. Yeah, I'll give you this water chip. Yeah, these mutants will get on with the humans. It's just, you can just, you convince everyone of everything. So yeah, this is good when games do that. But I'm not sure how they do that with Warframe. It'd be like... I was going to ask, do you think they can do that in Warframe? Do you think you can pitch that to the player base? Where it's like, oh yeah, we're just... <laughs> the, the big sort of climax to this thing is actually not going to be combat. Like, is that, would that, would that work? <laughs> But as as a game as a service, would you even want to have a climax? I mean, like no. with games like you know Witcher and stuff, it makes sense to have a, because it's supposed to have an end to the narrative. But what were you going to say, Loz? I would say I don't think you could quite do it that way, but you could make it. It'd be interesting if the game ended with a choice where it's like kill the big bad or not kill the big bad. So either way, and you have to actually defend against other players or against NPC versions of other players to either kill or not kill the big thing that, that would be either option it would have to be options based on our ability to fight i think because the game is not set up or any other methods of dealing with things that are not the end of a gun so you have to come up with ways of using that in different ways is the only way to do it but like how do you introduce player choice where it has to have like permanence and it's going to affect like future events and stuff that's always the issue of, of just like yeah what if I choose one thing and you choose another thing, and then we have an event in the future that's dependent on what you chose, and how is that going to work? Well, the, the sensible thing, which I think they've already, they tried that with The War Within, and they, I think Steve said, yeah, I wish we didn't do that, is but especially because they picked options. What, what you need to do is that the outcomes are the same, but your character's method of executing that is different. So, for instance, the the at the end of War Within, spoilers, whatever, with the, when you you know the Worm Queen, either you kill it or Teshin kills it. So either way, yeah. the outcome is the same for the character being dead, so the narrative can continue. But it's just more how your player interacted with the option more than just. Instead, they went with like I think you can let her live or something on some of the options. Yeah. That, that's yeah. a stupid thing to do because then how do you write that for players who didn't kill her versus players that did you've always got to keep key points the same but then you made the moral choice and how your character would then interact with you know you were still responsible but you didn't bloody your hands is a difference that makes you know a narrative difference that's it's only a difference on a it's only a difference on a personal level it's not gonna like it's just how you feel about your own character yeah. it's the telltale method of like the illusion of choice instead of actual choice well no because you you can make it affect things you know, you you can make it that different that different players have different audio lines, but the events for levels are the same. But it means that you change it subtly, the, the, and you could change the, the the rewards that you get. That's it. Is. I, I agree with you though. You don't want to make it that the choice is completely pointless. I remember playing what was the Star Wars MMO? 
Ah, uh, the the old Republic. I remember playing. Yeah. My friend, my brother was playing. We're playing literally doing the same quest. He did the light side one. I did the dark side options. I was threatening the guy. This 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 person. We're doing the same quest. He's like, "Oh, I'll help you for free." And I was like, "You better give me some more money. You better pay up because I'm not doing this free." And like, "Okay, okay, I'll give you some more stuff." And then we look. We looked at our reward screen, and they were identical. So what was yeah. the point? <laughs> it was like, "You better no. give me some more. Money. I'll give you some more money." And the same. That, that that's where it becomes pointless. Though to give some extra credit towards um, Star Wars The Old Republic, there were different paths in a dungeon yeah. based on the actual interaction. So if you, if you said good and uh, bad things at the right times, you were able to do, have different experiences. Like you go down different corridors, you had different bosses. Like, yeah, there was an entire section of the, the dungeon you could effectively skip if you didn't um get all gung-ho and say like oh yeah we'll take the fight to them yeah you know instead but, of but oh, none, we'll of those, save them. none of those changes had a bigger impact beyond the dungeon didn't they that's yeah that's the problem that, with warframe where true. they would i will say though i like your idea of making it so that all, all the roads converge to the same point i fully feel that well that that's not choice if if basically no matter what i do we get the same outcome i think it's important to in the delivery. Um, maybe this is what you were saying, and I didn't understand it. Mm. But maybe there are the three options: one, you kill her; two, Teshin kills her; or three, she tries to kill you. Yeah. But instead, Teshin defends you and kills her. Yeah. So in that option, right? yeah, she she um you know Teshin goes uh, no he's like you know oh you've beaten me I I uh, you you te kill me kill me Antenna and your character goes no so Teshin goes I'll do it and then your character stops Teshin. And then the the worm queen becomes insulted and then leaps at you to try and go, well, I'll kill you then. And then yeah. dies through a mix of things. So it's not quite, yeah. So either way, dead, but just variants of it. Yeah. But I mean, I would also give like those different wards would give different, let's say, uh, ephemeras. So the good player would get a glowing white orb around them, whereas the evil player gets just hovering orbs of blood, you know. So you can represent and feel like you have obtained something differently. They also did try it with... I like that. They did. They did try and do that sort of thing with the. What was the quest with the little girl? Glass Gambit. Oh yeah, they did yeah. give you different pictures. Oh, but they broke that. But they broke it. Yeah, I was like, <laughs> kill the girl. Pictures received. You saved me. <laughs> I was like, no, I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> you got good uh, boy points. I was like, yeah, that broke. they they did fix it in the end, I think. But I didn't. They didn't change the pictures, but they fixed the wheel. My wheel was off. I I think they're not going to do that at all anymore, though. I don't think it's too much effort. No, they said that they don't want to continue the morality wheel anymore. It's, <laughs> it's. I think th they were realizing how much of a, um, a headache it was going to be in the future. Wait, but, yeah, but only because, like I've said, they didn't think through their choices. That they made it so that it actually made massive differences to the plot, which is like, oh, this character is now alive. No, no, never do that. Never make it that different. <sighs> No, but also I think like, I don't know, people misunderstand the morality system at all. I don't think it was sort of like morality. A lot of those choices aren't like binary good or evil. That's kind of like, it seems like they were going yeah. for some sort of night day aesthetic with the black and white, mm. not actually good or bad. And it's, it's just a, a different sort of philosophical outlooks on stuff. Yeah, no, I, I, I agree with that because you were talking about like, you know, oh, how your dad reacted to you in uh, in the war within and things. So I no, I completely agree with you on that one. I how did we get to this point? We were <laughs> about... Yeah, we're, we're evil. evil. We're evil. We're not the good guys. We're the yep. baddies. Maybe. Well, it's a random oh, point. Guys. <laughs> well, I remember <laughs> this is this is game because we do nothing on this show but just for, go back in my day. <laughs> Warframe. One of the earliest events was called Glass Gambit. Which, no, not Glass Gambit. No, Gravidius Dilemma. Gravidius Dilemma. That's what it was called. We love this event, don't we, Zeno? Oh, God, I've ruined my hip motion. Yep. Let me reset that. Um, the, it was the best event, in our opinion, they've ever done because they actually gave us some player choice. And it was glorious. Uh, so you had the choice between supporting either... Ooh, uh, which armor? Sorry. Either, what was it? Alad V or Sargus Ruck. Yeah. 
and Saga Shrock, it, it was it was really clever. It was entirely, you see this thing, I don't get why they don't repeat this, because it didn't take a lot of assets to produce. We never actually saw the implications of our fight, but it was implied, and they could make something of it very easily. It was all done in text and a few audio lines. You either had the choice of supporting Alad V, and thus stopping the Grenier invading the colonists on Mars, or you could su support Sargus Ruck to stop Alad V getting his hands on a cache of Warframes in cryosleep. And that was the choice. So you were given a choice, you were giving outcomes, and they also used to, and they've completely dropped this notion. Back then they used to talk about, I think the balance was a term that was used, as if the Warframe's goal was to maintain the balance of the solar system. I mean, originally that's what it was. I've not, I've not played the new waking up intro thing, but the original waking up thing was Lotus is waking up because the Grenier are getting too strong, and so you have to stop them. Nothing about the corpus, nothing about anything else. So it was more that the, the balance of the solar system maybe must be maintained. Since then, we're just like, yeah, we just got to kill people. But Gravity Slam was the greatest thing because it gave players choice and it gave you a feeling that you were actually impacting the effect in the solar system. And then they've never, ever, ever, ever achieved that again. <laughs> Except for destroying a relay or something. But, uh, <laughs> but, but um, correct me if I'm wrong, but wasn't there actually like a, they declared like who actually won that conflict? Yep. There was like a winner of that one, right? Yeah. Because that's a thing. If you do an event where you let people choose something and you let them pick sides or whatever, and then you let that event have an outcome, and then that sort of shapes how you move forward, that's something you can do. I guess it just sort of like doesn't mesh with if they they have their plan for where they want the story to go, and they I guess they don't want the community event to event like potentially interfere with that. <laughs> I think. This actually, so so a, a large part of the problem with this was the fact that the outcomes could be different. For example, on uh, PC, uh, Xbox, and PlayStation, the the relays that were destroyed during Eyes of Blight were different. Like you know, different relays existed in different places. I think mm -hmm. the only one that was commonly destroyed everywhere was the Earth one. Um, I could be wrong. But likewise, in Two Men of Rigor, which was a pseudo Rividius Dilemma, a sh on... Amiga Shadow, <laughs> pseudo Rividius Dilemma, Amiga Shadow <laughs> of. If I keep on saying pale pseudo, imitation, what he said, because he's going to constantly interrupt me. Um, <laughs> It, what was I saying? Oh yeah, the on PC, Alad V won. Mm. But oh. I think on PlayStation, yeah. Nathaniel won. Yep. Right. So it, you know, so the thing well, that's going to be solved, right? Because we're going to have a crossplay. It's going to be just one thing for for everyone. Yeah. Yes. I <laughs> think I think that will give um de the opportunity to just go yeah you know it's it's but i think they'll have to turn around and say right all the stuff that happened for consoles and you know no pc canon yeah no, what yeah, they'll do canon but that's the question right when they do cross play mm. uh what happens if you have multiple accounts is it just you're just gonna pick one like this is the one it's gonna be and you're gonna migrate that to a, to every console or whatever Question. I don't think you're going to merge accounts. I think you just have to pick one. But they did let. Yeah, that's the problem. Is a, a years ago they let you copy across when they first came out with the PlayStation and Xbox and the Switch. I think as well. They did let you copy your account from PC onto those platforms. So and then obviously they've gone off. So I don't know. Remerging them. I mean, if I it think... literally just went on the highest values of everything. So your highest between the two accounts, if it went your highest credits is this, that's how many credits you have. The You have this mod unlocks on this, this one, but you're missing this mod, but you have it on here. So when you merge, you have it unlocked. So if it just went for highest value or positive values, they could merge them. You know, like, do you have this Warframe on this account, but on this account? Well, you now have this account on the, on the merged account. That'd be the only way I think you could do it. But yeah, maybe yeah. they probably just won't. I don't think they will. I think maybe they'll just be like two accounts. Because I've like I've got two adaptation mods. One isn't maxed out because I don't want it to be maxed out because yeah. you know because of a mod capacity and space and stuff. But if I merge, in that case, I would only get to keep like one of them. <laughs> now well, it's like it's not it's not like bulletproof either way. But I, I just mm. don't know how you would do it. Yeah, I think I think the 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 solution is like you log into your PC account on your PC. You log into your Switch account on your Switch. 
and then you just basically give your PC account everything. Mm. You, know, you just transfer everything across, and then... But you can't transfer like, most things. Like? Formed weapons. Okay. Yeah. That, that, uh, on my I, Switch I account, you. I love my Mark I bow, and I have formed it 37 times. On my PC, I've not For even leveled reason. it. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, alternatively, they could go, you have to log into both devices at the same time. You have to put in special codes into both of them, and then it will just sit, go there and just merge everything together. So you have to be in both accounts at the same time. That would be a way of merging it. And then you could, in theory, keep everything. I'm going to say the, the cynic in me is going to say, like, I have this sneaking suspicion that it's just going to be a pick one. Yeah. Or, or just there'll be no merger, but both accounts can now, yeah, you just play it. You, you just get both accounts on both platforms and you just play what you want, you know? Hmm. Hmm. Could be. I think there'll be enough of a demand, you know, like, hey, you know, make it merger. Give us a merger. We want a merger. And then, yeah, I don't know. Would they actually cave? Or who knows? I mean, you or they could just like put out some sort of statement with just like, I don't know, can't be done. Who yeah. Knows? Who knows why? Oh, well, we won't know until we actually get a dev stream. <laughs> yeah, yeah, maybe a bit too much speculation about stuff we don't know the thing about, and we just sound like idiots. <laughs> we all however, sound like idiots. However, <laughs> oh dear. are we the bad guys? <laughs> mm. <laughs> I, I, to be fun, I think we've really nipped this in the bud. I think we're mercenaries, right? You know, we have orders. We go murder stuff. You know, we, we don't swing into action when we see a crime. We get told what to do. We're actually it's... child soldiers, if you think about yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> and I know a lot of people have issue even considering that. Mm. Well, uh, maybe at some point we'll grow tech, up. It's like the anime thing. Like, oh, no, no, no. I know she looks like an 11-year-old girl, but she's actually <laughs> oh, an 800-year-old dragon. It's like the same, <laughs> same thing. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, uh, you should, should, should never invited me on. <laughs> no, it was awesome. No, it's lovely. Yeah, it's I lovely suppose lovely. technically Tenno must be thousands of years old. <laughs> it's well, gotta I mean, be. It, here's the question for you, yeah. right? <sighs> Do not invite this, Drew. When you are cryogenically frozen, Fine. right, are you can still considered aging? You're not experiencing... <laughs> no, 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 this is an no, important no, question. <laughs> right? You, you're, you're not experiencing life, right? Your cells are not getting any older, right? Mm -hmm. You know, you're not producing new cells. You are frozen. You are in a yeah. uh, state of suspended animation, right? Yeah. Could you be considered getting older? Hmm. Well, <laughs> you have the demolition man clause, which is that he was actually awake for the entire time he was cryofrozen. So he was yeah. just trapped in, in his mind with his thoughts for hundreds of years. In that case, I would say, yes, you are still getting older, right? But, I guess, yeah. yeah. But if you're, if you're like suspended anime, you know, you, nothing's happening. You're not even yeah. dreaming, yeah. right? Could you be consider getting, uh, considered getting older? But you've also, it's the same sort of problem you have if you travel faster than light when the person, say, standing on Earth versus somebody who goes and travels ridiculous fast on the speed of light for a bit and comes back time will actually be different for them so i think the person who travels faster light will actually travel to the future like you know they'll, they'll gone let's say 200 years into the future but for them it was just a 10 minute quick dash back and forward and the person on earth That's hasn't wrong. changed so you know sorry they're 800 years older now so it's like how do you according to the records on earth this person now 800 actually they're still 12 i don't know you know it yeah it's it, who knows who knows <laughs> anyway let's go to replies <laughs> We work out if child soldiers are legal if they travel through cryo. Oh my god! Right, right. So the first reply from from people on this is another. We we get loads of topics from Reddit. Reddit's great for the moment. Right. So first one: mm -hmm. If the Grenier of the USSR, <laughs> the oh god, it's gotten even worse now. <laughs> okay, right, and the right, corpus. I'm ready. If the Grenier of the USSR and the corpus of the US, I guess that would make the Tenno ISIS. <laughs> 
Uh, yep, we're Space Isis. We take weapons of the old war and turn it against our creators to make a better life for the system. See, I think oh. the Grenier are so cool because the Grenier are actually not the USSR at all. Yeah. They're, they're, no, they're reverse Nazis. Yes. Oh, sorry. There's one point. So they've put in one massive word really quickly. Oh my God, Space Mom is a terrorist in one massive word. It's the last part of the reply. Yeah, they, they, they are. Yeah, they definitely are. Yeah, they're... Um, Wait, how how are they space Nazis? No, Sorry, they're reverse, reverse Nazis. Nazis. Uh, Sorry, well, it's, it's not it's not the whole uh, Aryan idea of the Übermensch and like the perfect uh, like we are a higher evolved being and therefore we should rule over others. It's quite the opposite. It's they know that they are genetically inferior to everyone else. Uh, they are just doing it almost out of a sense of revenge. Oh, like this is th this is how we punish the rest of the world for creating us. Kinda, uh, they know what they are. But they have the same sort of mission goals as the Nazis would have, which is like just uh, uh, remove everything that's not Grenier, <laughs> basically. Mm. I do remember somewhere along the lines, there used to be Grenier lines, uh, voice lines, where they would be talk about purity being important. You know, that's what, and that's the other reason why they just keep cloning and cloning and cloning, because they see themselves, their historic years and years ago, Grenier were the pure. Grenier, and obviously they don't want to try and dilute them or whatever. That's why only it comes to people like Teal Rigor, who are the mad exceptions who are trying to actually fix things, whereas everyone else is like, no, we must keep cloning, because Grenier, cloning stock, historic one, is the best. So I don't know. Well, originally, I'm sure they were. Like, yeah. they were cloned to be, like, the best possible sort of workers that the Oroken could have. So I'm, yeah. I'm sure they were all goddamn physical specimens back then. <laughs> but, but, but... <laughs> they can't replicate the process, which is yeah. why every new generation of Grenier is just more falling apart. Yeah, and they're <laughs> the more replaced one. with robotics, yeah. But as people don't seem yeah. to realize is that most... Of, you know, they might look like, I don't know, a space marine with armor and things, but they're not actually... Quite a lot of that is actually robotics replacing, like, their legs. Most Grenier don't even have legs. They've just got robotic legs because their legs suck, you know? <laughs> yeah. My, my question is, was the degradation of... The cloning process gonna be was that always inevitable? No, no. I think it's even explained in the lore that it's just like that. That was Orokin technology that's been lost uh, after yeah. the fall of the Orokin Empire. So they can't replicate the process the way that the Orokin did it. Yeah, right. they have an inferior okay. cloning process. I okay, mean, fair yeah, enough, and they all remember the way they do it though is they also get a dead body and chop it up to seven and make it into more clones. <laughs> so that's like right. Where is that? That's that's all. Uh, don't you remember? I, I what? hadn't heard that. what. If you, it was uh, in the concept art and the before they released the C Lab tile set. They even showed one diagram of it where there's like this cloning tank and it's that's got six red. orbs. And it was they they explained that the, what that was about is the traditional way of Grenier making more Grenier is when a Grenier dies, they take one body, chop it up, and make six new Grenier out of that Grenier. Oh. <laughs> but it was it was also a spark part of the game's way of being like even though you know the, the, all the Tenno players have killed billions of Grenier, all they've done is made more Grenier. You know, so that it, you just made a a de even not even a scratch in the actual number of Grenier that are in the system because there's just billions of them. And even when you kill them, you know, you you run through a mission, kill, exterminate seventy five Grenier, and then leave on your ship, and then some poor Janice comes on and goes, right, better get a cloning. <laughs> Matt, can the I just? Can I just say how impressive I think it is that they took what was most likely a budgetary reason when they were like this fledging little studio just building this game from, from nuts and bolts or whatever. Mm. And they had to come up with some explanation for why the enemies only had like three different character models. <laughs> 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 and they turned that into like just super cool lore. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know how I don't? I just check because I know you said you've been playing the game for uh, three years. But the um, do you know the history of D trying to make Warframe and as a? As... I mean, I know about Dark Sector, but n no. So the Can't original concept for Dark Sector was actually in two thousand and four, and it's really fun to watch because, like, the, basically the Grenier and the Corpus were just your enemy factions, one faction. Obviously, they then expanded it when trying to make Warframe, but they pitched it to so many people with basically Warframe, and they wouldn't make it, and then it became the game Dark Sector, which was then set in the so against the Soviets and all this other stuff because Old because War. because yeah because all these World War II games were making money at the time. Oh, no one wants sci-fi. And then eventually they got to, what, 2013, 2012? And they went, let's take a risk and just make this game ourselves. And then they did. They made the game, the sci-fi game they wanted, and it was successful. But it was more dark back then. 
Anyway, anyway, let's not get me into that. Right, next point. Um, where are we at? We're not heroes. How many kills do you make in a 5 to 10 minute survival mission? We also massacred the Orokin. Yes, they were very bad people, but that still included kids and innocent people. There isn't a thing as an innocent Orokin. There you go. <laughs> but there is a thing as a, a kid Orokin. Yeah. Still not innocent. I'm not sure there is a thing as a kid Orokin. There weren't that good, many working, yeah. and they were doing their goddamn body transfers. That little kid, he's probably, he's not a little 11-year-old. He's actually an 800-year-old <laughs> dragon. Um, <laughs> in, in, the, in the case of the Orokin, that was actually the case. Yes, yeah, he's right, yeah. We get yeah. that from Inaro's backstory. They went and collected these little Nubian boys from Mars and whatever because they wanted new bodies. Mm. Yeah. Uh, uh, one thing I was thinking of is like considering the Grenier are just constantly cloning more and more troops. Mm. Like, I wonder how they actually quote unquote grow them. Like, are we killing reverse Nazi babies in big tin suits? Yeah, the, the well, Grenier don't even have legs, so basically they're just um, babies in giant robotic strollers. Yeah. No, and they're, just... they're grown in tubes, and in the case of like the ghouls, it's just like it's just like a plastic bag with with like some soup in. and and like a barely barely functioning thing inside, and they just airdrop it on onto Earth. <laughs> it can grow. They, they dig it like two meters below ground, and then it can, like just I don't know ripen. It is. <laughs> yep. Cool. Next one. Right. Next point. Uh, Grenier bad. Corpus bad. Moving space cancer. Bad. Let's commit genocide. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like who, who are the good guys? It's 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 the Warm 40k. <laughs> it's grimdark, right? Everyone's evil. Well, that's how you do your sci-fi. Classic. Everyone's evil, he says, wearing <laughs> bright pink. Excalibur with butterfly wings and rabbit ears. It's grimdark. Sounds pretty evil to me. <laughs> I mean, honestly. <laughs> See, that's what you gotta understand about like evil. In real life, the evil guy, the, the, the killer, he's not gonna walk around with a black hat. No. He's gonna be dressed in pink with plastic wings. <laughs> no one would suspect him. There's Almost. only one evil person or evil anything in the bloody Games Workshop universe, and that's Games Workshop and their bloody intellectual property regulations. Why do they keep licensing out their products to inferior studios who just put out these cheap cash grabs? Can't I just money. one... Get a good Warhammer game. That's never gonna happen. Uh, Total War Warhammer was a good game. Space Marine was a good game. Oh, Space Marine was too good. Space Marine was a good game. All right, all right, all right. Fine. Good. There Two games. That's all you got. But no, I'm complaining. Have you guys not kept up to date on the recent stuff with Games Workshop? Work Workshop. No. What is it now? <laughs> so they're making, just side event for anyone who wants a bit of an update, they're making, because, you know, they've got Disney Plus, they're going to make Warhammer Plus, where they're going to put Warhammer content oh. and you have to buy in to watch what? it. And so what? then, yep. <laughs> then they went out into the community and they hired, for instance, the guy who does the Starties, the oh, Space yeah, Marine thing. Yeah, They've hired yeah. him to put stuff on there. And everyone's like, yeah, it's brilliant. Game Directional's finally doing sensible things like giving this guy money to make more stuff for them that's good instead of rubbish like they, when they tried before, like with their Space Marine movie. Uh, oh, no, Ultramarine movie. I know where movie. this is going. I know and where then this is going. they turned around and said, oh, look, the fan animation channels on YouTube where this, 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 you know, this guy came from that was, you know, the freedom we've let you make your own stuff. Cease and desist on all of you. Yeah. What? Yep. No, no, I'm not done yet. Modding. Modders over there making mods for games like uh, Total War and other games, you know, who, who add in content, add in storylines. Cease and desist on all of you. <laughs> and everyone's predicting the next one is going to be lore channels. That Anyone who uses any piece of uh, Games Workshop uh, IP, they're going to turn around and say, cease and desist on all of you. Because they want it all on Warhammer Plus. They want you to go pay for Warhammer Plus. So instead of, Here you know, you know uh, yeah, sorry, here you go. Here's the insidious part, the really goddamn messed up part, okay? It's because, yeah, he got, he got hired, right? Yay, everything's great. Yeah. But then, the next guy turned the offer down. Ah. Didn't, they offered him a job too. He turned it down. Then they shut down his channel. Yeah. 
Wow. So what so what this is, this is a threat. This is that when they come and offer you that job, if you don't take it, they're gonna shut your channel down. I so one <laughs> If memory serves, didn't Games Workshop get bought out by someone recently? No idea. Lars? Uh, no, they I don't think they've been bought out, but they've been, as, as, as Nick said earlier, they're selling their IP to just about everyone under the sun. Like, they right. get let Marvel made a comic book, which makes no sense. They brought on a Hasbro, ex-Hasbro director to start selling, to work out how to sell toys because they're worried about the 3D printing market in 10 years will mean their whole producing yeah. miniatures thing won't work anymore. That's why they're doing this, but yeah. So just, just let's bring it back to Warframe. So that's why thank you, D, for being nice and letting people make fan animations, fan channels or whatever and supporting the community. And podcasts. And podcasts. Absolutely. Right, so next one. So I've, by the way, uh, just while I get that, I've put pictures of the cloning concepts uh, in the channel. Uh, oh, no, I've put them in Xenos thing. Uh, do you want to copy them yeah. across me, Xeno, while I'm here? Um, right, next point is... Da, 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 da. One of the lovely functions of Fortuna is giving concrete evidence of what corpus rule is like for common folks and give an explicit demonstration of how Davo is correct, that the corpus are just as bad as the Grenier. I want to interject here because this is actually Nefanyo. Yes. And oh, my okay. understanding was that Nefanyo is not part of the board of directors. Yes, he, he is. wants to be... Yes, he is. I is think he? he is. Yeah, I think he is. Yeah. Because I, 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 th I thought the whole point was that he turned... Like, the... The whole quest for legs and things was, you know, uh, oh yeah, yeah, please let me. Uh, I was just about to do it, lost. Um, ah. Please let me um, be part of the ball. Or, you know, I I've got this cool product. Let me sell it to you. Let me be part of the ball. I didn't think he was part of the ball. I got the impression and that he is, but I don't know. I don't know. Because again, it was supposed to be the whole side of like. The corpus were this. This is the religious side of corpus compared to the whole capitalist side of corpus, which is what Allard was supposed to represent. Oh, I don't know because like Allard also tries to do stuff to impress the the other uh, board members and whatnot. It seems like they're always vying for influence back and forth. Um, but I'm gonna I'm gonna say I'm gonna say that the corpus are not as bad as the Grenier. <laughs> like. Um, they're still ostensibly evil in, in the way that that word can be used to describe anything in the Warframe universe or whatnot. But if you ask me, like, which which rule would I rather be under? I'm gonna say Corpus is, like, the dystopian sort of, uh, you have to sell an arm to pay there off your debts and whatnot. But, um... I, I, I just checked um Nefany on the board of the directors. He's yes, there isn't. I... He is. He is. Yeah, okay. I was gonna say, isn't yeah. the deadlock protocol the first lines of the deadlock protocol, so I just looking those up, was him saying seven four, seven against, cast and repass seven times. So it's decided, you know, that is, if if it wasn't for the board voting, who is he talking about voting? <laughs> no, 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 no. But I mean he doesn't have to be part of the board to actually vote. I guess but he's just, he turns around and goes like deadlock protocol. I'm Parvus Granum's son. Wait, no. If, if, <laughs> wait, 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 wait. If you're not part of the board of directors and you get the board of directors to vote on something and then they vote seven four against, and you're like, great, I'm invoking on you lot the deadlock protocol, even though I'm not even on the board. <laughs> How would I yeah, invoke no, that yeah. against you? <laughs> I don't think he um, was voked, um, invoking it. It was just a case of because this is. Uh, cause a deadlock. It, it just happens. It's by like profit gotta... and void, by the blessed handless founder, we hereby invoke the deadlock protocol. I'm going to say that sounds like he's on the board. <laughs> <laughs> if you say well, I mean, we, it's... you know... It's just, it's just, it's just... Well, I swear, I remember DE saying like the whole point was that he wasn't part of it, which is like the whole big thing with Two Men of Rigor was the fact that he was the other side of the corpus. But going on a bit of a tangent here, I've always mm. wondered about like just the, the star system of like 
what is the power structure? I know that all the planets are like Grenier planet or Corpus planet or whatnot, but yeah. we we understand the balance. We understand that idea, and suddenly the the Grenier are just like pushing for domination of the of the solar system, and that is a fairly recent thing. My impression was that after the Orokin Empire fell, what emerged from the ashes of that was basically the Corpus, and the Corpus ha have sort of been running the solar system for for a while now but now the the grenier are showing up and are just laying their claim to it yeah. and 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 we're kind of at a 50 50 now so i feel like the corpus is sort of like is this what life is like for most people in the solar system or are there planets that are not under corpus control what what, what are those planets like yes exactly that's what yeah that's why um the the Gravidius was interesting because it said the colonists of Mars and they were going to get attacked yeah. by the Grenier, but they didn't, but Allah didn't care about them and they weren't referred to as corpus colonists. He yeah. was abandoning everything. It was just the colonists of Mars. So that they were just a neutral fact. But it's the weird thing. Back then they even used to say, and it was actually, there used to be a QA and a thing which they would have a, there's the name Cephalon on the website to answer a question for them. It's like, why don't we see normal people in the solar system? It's like, they do exist, but you, Tenno, just doing your things are probably never going to interact with them. And then later we got the Ostrons. <laughs> But yeah, so there's supposed to be a lot more people in the solar system. It's just that they're not on a Grenier Galleon. They're not on a Corpus spaceship. And we don't ever really go to the Hablock colony f uh, hovering yeah. around Jupiter, for instance. There's no reason for us to go there. It's got no military presence or anything. So we've never planned there, you know. My understanding um, was that the Corpus um, existed prior to the fall of the Arakan Empire. Yes. Yeah. Because yeah. Okay. Sorry, I I I, I misunderstood you then, Nick. Sorry, my bad. No, so, no. I'm I'm just saying they existed before. Yeah. But yeah. after after the Orokin Empire fell, they basically just took over everything and yeah. became the I, new ruling force. Yeah. But I think uh, if you if I mean I don't think yeah, there's, there's a board and things and there's different corpus. Though we've seen the horrible side of it with like the the people on with Nef controlling on Venus. But I don't think that is though. There's probably a few people. Like that, I don't think that's a majority of corpus people there's probably like i mean the, if the corpus controlled the solar system what are they going to do they're just going to be like oh well we'll just mine things and make money you know they won't oppress yeah. people whereas the grenier are actually open to killing those because they're not grenier killing them because they're not grenier working them to death in a slave mine because they're not grenier you know so i think that's why i, th I think corpus are pretty fine with working people to death in a slave mine as well <laughs> i don't think they are i think they build a robot to do it instead most for most people oh look at fortuna yeah Jesus, I know, that's what at... i mean i think they're actually the exception not the rule i, I think that know. was neff being sneaky and getting control like there is something to it like getting control of fortuna and not wanting to send robots down to do it and actually you, you know it's cheaper and easier to do it with people in that extreme example but i don't think that is the average corpus situation i think they're, yeah, I they're think... a rare extreme I think it is, and I think that's what they're kind of going for with Parvos Granum, and he's trying to to revive the original idea yes, that the Corpus yes, was founded yeah. on, because he thinks that the Corpus have lost their way. Look at guys like Al Ladvi, and it's like, even... He's still willing to do anything to get ahead. He doesn't care about other people. He doesn't have any sort of, like, concern for, for the welfare of anyone else. He can he can crack open a Warframe while it's still alive just to look what's inside. He doesn't know, but he'll do it anyway for science. So, so you know, I'm, I'm not sure it's they're so much nicer than Neff would be. I, I, they're just as cruel, just for different reasons. Hmm. I think. I don't know. I mean, we'd also had I don't I don't know if he's dead or not because they've just clearly abandoned the character. But we did have Frond Beck as well, who at least he cared about Darvo. So at least he <laughs> I, mm. no, I, I think they've said that. I think they said that he survived. Oh, I think that's okay. been. I think somewhere at some point in some update or whatever, yeah, it's mentioned in passing that he didn't die. I think. But but Lars, nobody's ever truly gone. No, it's true. <laughs> Also, we have Vala, and Vala actually cares about her sisters in their whatever that place was called, which was never explained or whatever. So there could be a whole pile of oh, sisters on the Lucretia, the Lucretia, the Lucretia, platform. The Lucretia platform. I mean, we don't know how many people are on that. I, we assume it was a lot because she's so mad about it. I don't think it was like two sisters, which is the minimum, you know. So there may have been loads of people in there, and she cared about them, and they were doing things. <laughs> Who knows? Oh well. Practicing their sea shanties. 
Ah, that would explain why Sevagoth would be so pissed. <laughs> How dare you have a stew sandwich? Like, that's, that's my territory. You know, you can't. Copyright infringement. No, I don't want. No. Blow it up. All right, the last point on the reply on this one is I already defined myself as a space pirate. Morally, what? Morality applies only if I'm helping an enemy of an enemy, or the pay is decent enough. So that's just Warframe's or Jack Sparrow. <laughs> I, lo I love it. Yeah, sure. Why not? Uh, yeah. I'm, wait, mm. is that actually a line from the Caribbean? It um, feels like. I define myself as a space pirate. Morality applies only if I'm helping the enemy of my enemy or if um, the pay is decent enough. Why? I don't think this person knows what wor the word morality means. <laughs> well, that's, that's why it feels like a movie quote. <laughs> well, I can't pick it up. If someone's done a very good one on that, that's, that's fair enough. But yeah. let us know in the comments if you know what that's from. It could be a movie like quote. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe if you it's copy like, the bit yeah. of morality only applies if I'm helping an enemy. Copy that and put it in Google, see what you get. Oh well. God. Right, but let's see on this. So let's go with the thing. Votes between us. Good, bad, or neutral. What are we? We're just soldiers. Yeah, I'm I would neutral. Say, no, 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 no. I, if we apply if we apply like just our modern day morality to this, like we put us in front of like the Geneva <laughs> the convention and <laughs> No, no, no. We would be going to jail for a very long time for the things that we have done. As we do use gas weapons, viruses. Oh, do, do, oh that is a completely different discussion. <laughs> no, no. We raise the dead yeah. of our enemies and make them fight their own brother. We do mind control people as well. That's true. And consume people for the for the fun of it. Yeah. We create a cloud of glass shards and just walk through enemies. It's no. Yeah. We do not need to kill them in these horrific, horrific ways that we do. It's no. <laughs> it's appalling. Yeah, but they they don't have feelings. They can't feel it. It's fine. <laughs> not when we're done, they can't feel anything. Yeah, well, I mean, have you seen all the cybernetics that the Grenier have plugged into them? I don't think they can feel anything to begin with. <laughs> That's why they're so yeah. upset. Yeah, exactly. That's why they're so ups yeah, so angry. Like, oh, they took my left knee. It was my good knee. Anyway, should we move on to the second topic? Sure. Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> right. Um, oh, before we do, yes, uh, Nick, have you seen the pictures on the cloning thing? So obviously the bottom yeah, yeah, one yeah, is yeah, the yeah. only one, yeah, which was two from one, but then they went to the six from one. Yeah. I've never seen that picture before. That yeah, it was great. supposed to be put in the labs, but they never did. They never put them in the um file set, which is a shame. That would be cool. And why isn't that a sabotage mission? Smash the clone tubes, you know, just to prove we're that evil. <laughs> that no, it is. Yeah. It is in the Grenier C labs in, in uh <sighs> But that it, not like that though. That that you can see like the bodies in there and it's really obvious what's yeah. going on. Instead it's just more like destroy the sort of that was kind of the destroy the Tilregor's researchy lab and there's a few yes. little tubes. It's not like that which, could you imagine a room with like ten of these in, and you have to smash all the tubes on ten of these? That yeah, would like get this the point one has across. an arm. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah, arms and just just mangled, mangled messes of half finished grenier just fall onto the ground and flop for a bit. You know, that'd be good. I love it. I'm home. The point. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> Topic two: modding Kuva weapons. I'm probably going to rely on Nick a lot for this one. Um, Might. <laughs> we have known that the bonus elements of Kuva weapons is treated as the last mod when it comes to element combinations. For those that has, yep, no, I'm reading it verbatim. For those that has single element on top of a bonus single element, that seems to not be the case. On tenant agendas. Yeah, that's what it says. With a heat bonus, it has innate electricity, adding viscous, vicious, vicious frost um, in the furthest left bottom slot produces blast and e electricity. On the tenant Cyprex, with innate heat and bonus toxin, Adding frostbite in the second from the left bottom slot produces blast and toxin, which is the opposite of what the agendas does. 
Okay. Agendas. I haven't got a fucking clue. Is it? It's probably one of the um, uh, new briefcase weapons. Is this like a local sort of translation thing, or like they have different names in different languages? No, no, it can't be. Um, I'll find it now and I'll link it to you. Um, well, I'm I'm curious where where he says like bottom left because otherwise it's bottom right if you wanted to have the lowest priority. So. It might be that they're just modding it wrong. Um, oh, the agenda is the short, uh, the the sword and shield. Oh, oh, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, I haven't gotten all of those yet. Mm. Oh, they yeah, just you have to trade for these, yeah. don't you? Yeah. They no, they just announced that they're gonna improve the uh, the corrupted hollow key farming. Now yeah. you're gonna get corrupted hollow keys for for killing uh, sisters of Parvos. Ah. So that's that's very nice. It's not in the game yet, but it will be. Um, okay, so they're talking about innate elements. Some weapons have innate elements, and then you can add your own innate elements with, with you know, your progenitor Warframe when you when you create the Lich or when you create the Sister. And they're talking about how that interacts with with elements when you mod it. And there seems to be some sort of discrepancy with which which one gets the lowest priority, if yeah. I understand it correctly. On terms of the heat bonus. As an electricity for the first last shot. Last and electricity. So on that one, the innate sorry, it's taking the innate is being separated out. On the tenant sparex, which has a neat heat and bonus toxin, adding sorry. frostbite in the second bottom left, uses blast and toxin. Sorry, the way this is worded is really confusing. Adding frost uh, sorry, vicious frost. In the furthest left bottom slot. Well, surely the furthest left is that furthest from the left, or the bottom left? Because if you wanted to have low priority, you put it in the bottom right, not in the yeah. bottom. Right. Yeah. So I I think in the furthest left bottom slot actually means the furthest from the left, which would be the bottom right slot. Gotcha. Which Could would be. make sense, which is how yeah. we would expect it to let's, work. Let's let's assume that. So let, let's assume that's what they mean, uh, yeah. for the sake of conversation, anyway. Uh, uh, there um, is a there is a picture on the uh, initial post. You want to um, copy it? Oh sure. Which oddly uh, enough, they don't put things in the same slot, which I'm confused about, and they don't use the same mod. Getting uh, a point across. Why not use the same mod in the same slot? I'm gonna pull this up. No, so they, they are actually putting it in the bottom left. Yeah, that's not that's not how you do it. So you wouldn't say the the furthest from the bottom left. Yeah, I don't. It's really weird. This person's trying to make a point, and just 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 for everyone's aware, if you're gonna make a point like this, you have to right. If you didn't learn science in oh, school, yeah. one of the key points is you keep everything <laughs> else the same. That's the goal, yeah. right? So if you're gonna give an example, uh, which I assume, oh, could we put that on a in the should we somehow get that picture. Uh, and I can put yeah, up. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. I, I, it's. I don't think it matters that it's bought. Say it. I, I think that might be the only mod that they have put in just to show how they interact. In one of the cases. Oh, sorry. I know why they're not using the same mod is because one's a different melee weapons. and one's yeah. a, yeah, different weapons. But why are they using the same slot? It just seems lazy. <laughs> I don't care. Yeah, but I, I don't think it's gonna affect it. They're just saying that in in one of the cases. The the mod that you use it combines yes, the bonus yeah, yeah. element, and in the other it combines with the innate yeah. element. But it just seems odd because I I know I'm probably nitpicking. Yeah, you are, but but because to be honest, what they probably should do is they should show the full build to show that that is the only mod in there, and yeah. it's just for the for the sake of um keeping things the same, just put it in the same slot for the screenshots. You what you should try and do. Uh, there's no reason not to because it's like. Um, or maybe they picked the unpolarity slot, but that wouldn't make a difference. Um, but maybe that's what they were trying to do. But you could just you could re you can rearrange polarities, so they could do that and then then link it. You know, it's, it it is just wrong. But yeah, let's assume that the rest of the build is empty because we must assume it's empty. And that, uh, that's the reason why. Meme night. Sure, I'll pop on screen for everyone to see it. There we go. Way now everyone can see it. Cool. Ah, uh, yeah. No, it just it just seems to 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 see that sometimes. It's gonna combine with the bonus element, yeah. And sometimes it's gonna combine with the 
innate element and it's not consistent in which cases it will combine with the one or the other i guess mm. all right could could be onto something could be how it works it feels like there needs to be more experimentation here i see a comment saying that like it might be that elements have their own sort of internal order <laughs> so so if, yeah, it might apply um, toxin before it applies heat and things like that. Yeah, I think that's the first reply case, here. Because yeah. in this case, both of them count as being last, so they have to be determined in between. But that's weird. That's weird. I mean, these things do happen. I remember... Do you remember years ago, we had... Um, oh... Hydroxate on, and he was explaining to us that the way they did elements on arcwing weapons was broken. Remember that? No. Oh, well, it was the thing. Because <laughs> arcwing doesn't exist anymore. Oh, quiet you. And it makes me sad. Um, I, yeah, I mean, I don't know, to me, there's just too much unknown here, because, like, what happens if you put the uh, the frostbite in the Spyrex in the bottom left-hand corner. Like, it, it just feels like... It feels like the the position might have more value to this than it actually is meant to have. Hold on, let me reread the po sorry, our notes. Uh, we know that the bonus element of a Kuva weapon is treated as the last mod when it comes to the element combination. Yes. For those, so that means, we're talking about the innate, so the heat damage? No, we're talking about if it doesn't have an innate. Uh, and we're just talking about combining mods oh, with right, the right, bonus right. element. Then so the bonus in, element always has the, fi the last priority. Right, so in this instance, the Agendas uh, has the bonus T, and the Spyrex has... Uh, bonus toxin. Yes. Right, okay. Um, but these so happen to be weapons that also have innate. an innate. Okay. And and then they behave weird when you try to mod them. It's not predictable what's going to be combined with what. So of. for those that have innate single element on top of a bonus single element, uh, that seems to not be the case. On the tenant agendas uh, with a heat bonus, it has innate electricity, uh, adding vicious frost in the bottom left um, produces blast and electricity. Um, on the Spyrex with innate heat and bonus toxin, uh, adding frostbite from the bottom left produces blast and see I, to me this instantly comes down to um oh crap how, how do i explain this i think this does it in alphabetical order and the innate heat and bonus um sorry the, the innate and the bonus are treated at the same layer does that make sense Yes, uh, except that in the comment section, it seems like after some testing, it's not alphabetical order, but there does seem to be an order. Uh, the order being heat, electricity, cold, the toxin. So, so there. I fifty quid says heat was actually originally called fire, <laughs> or hot, or you know. who knows. But it's it's still not going to be alphabetical. But um, um, electricity could have been lightning. Oh. Do you remember they they have their placeholder? Oh, you names think it's and... you think it's placeholder? There's an internal name for the yep. elements. Yes, because different. like the, the whole <laughs> the whole game still runs on placeholder names. Yep. Like um, oh god, when um, Tobiah who built the Genesis, um, Genesis bot for Discord, like you know, whenever new stuff comes in, he gets the internal naming structure before he actually gets the proper... So he has all the internal names and he has to translate them. So I wouldn't be surprised if electricity used to be called lightning, right? You know, um, heat used to be called fire. Um, frost probably remain, or maybe ice. 
or cold or whatever. So I won't be surprised if it's the internal naming structure that's causing the issue here. And the fact that um, the innate and the bonus elements are treated as if they're like next to each other. Yeah, they're, they're effectively the same mod slot. I love that's the example you give instead of a better example. <laughs> I'm gonna what? I'm gonna have to test this. I'm gonna uh, have to go back and, and, and theorycraft a bit. When, because when? this otherwise, if you don't use any other element mods, if you just have um one innate element and then one bonus element mm -hmm. and nothing else, they will combine. Yeah. Um so the question is just if you just add one elemental mod, which of these two will it combine with and which will it leave alone? I mean if I was to program this, uh, you've got the mod slots for the weapons. I would have made two additional invisible mod slots that the players cannot interact with, and then just go, right, alphabetical, shove these in. Right? Mm. Yeah, that, that's it. Right. Um, do you not remember when, when we were at the studio, Zeno? <laughs> we had to spawn in enemies. No, I don't remember this. Oh, do you not remember the, the type in codes? I mean, I don't remember the actual, all of it, but I remember what a uh, Corpus Crewman was called. Oh, shit. Yeah, go on. Well, Spaceman. Oh, God, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so it's like the code is like Spawn in Spaceman Ultra or Spawn in Spaceman Basic or something like that. So, yeah, they, they have internal names for things. So, yes, that could easily be, as you were saying. Would you say that Heat was called Fire? Yeah. Uh, like, yeah, it could, be, it could oh, it easily be like that. Very easily. You know, Fascinating. As in, definitely that is how the game is coded. <laughs> as in, we've actually played with it. Like, yeah. Boxing could be poison. Yes. Yeah. I, I nearly went gas then for a second, and I thought, wait, no, they already have a gas. Gas could be called poison. <laughs> now I want to test this with, like, uh, Warframe abilities. Like, Ooh. Nourish. Nourish adds a toxin mod on top of of whatever like the uh, the weapon already has, that's how it works in practice. It adds a toxin mod. So, what priority would that get? <laughs> what? Yeah. How would that combine? Would it combine? Because it's applying the effects of the mod. It's not actually applying the mod. No, I think you can. I think you can combine. That would be you interesting. Because I think if you like use nourish. And then you cast an ability that normally does like cold. I think it's instead gonna do, or like you sh you fire a weapon that normally does cold damage. I think mm. it's it's instead gonna do viral damage. Because that would mean technically you could modify your loadout on the fly if it actually picks it up straight away. All very interesting. Um, I. <sighs> I, I, I don't know how to, to I mean, yeah, this this is really interesting that this was highlighted. But I mean It's a minor thing, all things considered. Yeah. My my question to you is if you have these weapons that have like innate fire, innate to or bonus fire, bonus toxin, bonus whatever, you know. Would you like to see these two extra mods? Like, so get your, your two extra mod slots appear in the weapon so you can rearrange where these innate things. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I would love that. Yeah. But you could never take them out. Yeah, that would be great. Yeah. Oh, it makes modding so much easier. I'm with you on that. Yeah. This yeah, that's is where, of course, they turn around and say, like, Oh yeah, no, it doesn't work like this at all. <laughs> <laughs> you just completely bullshitted everyone. Uh, do you want to turn off the image loss? <laughs> right, okay. Uh, should we go to the replies? First replies, I like how elements on ribbons are applied from bottom to top. So if it lists heat, then toxin, then cold, you get viral plus heat. Wow, okay. That used to drive me crazy when gas damage was actually decent, but I guess it's beneficial now. Lol. Wow, Hold that's, that's, on. So even I on a mod. Know. Hold on. Hold ah. on. <laughs> that 
<laughs> that breaks a lot of <laughs> stuff. That break the logic you've written so far. Yeah, because unless it is like massively programmed differently. Yeah, which it probably would be because they're all separate on just the one item, which isn't a weapon. So if it heat, sorry, if it least least toxin cold becomes viral plus heat. So it only the it only depends on which order they happen to be in the river. No, but if yeah, but and that's random. Uh, So I mean, that's that's. Well, I mean, they, they they say here that the combination is the last two parts, not the first two parts. Uh, no, the, uh, uh, I like how the elements of rooms are applied bottom to top. If it yeah. heat, toxin, cold, it's, it's reading cold, toxin, heat. Yeah. I wonder if that's a weird display thing. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, it could be, yeah. A weird UI thing that just reverses the order of Yeah, well, the... how... No- yeah, I mean, it's, it's completely... Who knows how the actual order is on the ribbon in the code rather than how it's presented, yeah. I also wonder, right, if the order of the elements is always statically the same on the mo- on the rivens, but the application is different. So I don't, say we'll, huh? I don't think so. Well, okay. no, nah, I've never, I've, I've never checked. This. No, I've never considered it. I, I would have thought it would be consistent. I, I wouldn't have. I, th- oh god. This just feels so weird to me. Because obviously it's applying the heat first on the bonus and the innate damage, but why would it apply the heat last on the rivens? Uh, I, I would say rivens probably work massively different. Yeah, that's the only explanation I can come up with. Yeah, but it is. I mean, it would make sense because who knows... You know, you're comparing a weapon weapon to a mod that's got multiple stats on. So, to to think they would work the same is is flawed. Why why would they work the same? Just because they they're a list of elements. They've got nothing else in in common. It's it's like an it's it's like a list. Yeah, yeah but you yeah, but you have no idea. You have no. Uh, yeah, but, but you have no idea how time, how a weapon with it multiple. Has to be, but it has to be some sort of interaction between them because you can combine the elements of a Riven mod with other elements as well from other mods so they yes. have to they have to be interacting some way with each other so you'd think they would function the same yeah but but yeah, weapons I mean, like function if... top to bottom right but rivens are functioning bottom to top it's just how they're set up no uh, but i mean my my thought would be right that it takes the weapon right and it goes right th- these are all of the elemental effects this is a list from zero to however many there are and then start applying unless there was already um cold oh, i don't know it's it's weird i bet like, the, again, a better ribbon unknowns. doesn't work the same way i mean you're just thinking like oh it's another mod it has to be an elemental but i doubt because ribbons don't always contain elementals i i bet you it has to do a different it can't just count them as as you, you were saying yeah, if it lists one to nine or whatever and these are the elements that are on this weapon and then there but when it gets to riven it probably has to do something different to look up the rivens does the riv- does ribbon can even contain elemental stats yes or no you know and and that, and that through that lookup it's then has to do it differently no but it has to also treat like the fire of a fire mod and the fire of a riven mod as a thing to combine together yes, to yeah, um, maximize yeah. the damage which is why i would assume that it would be in the same one list right i i think the but answer who knows is- because rivens came later they may have hard coded normal mods one way and then had to fudge rivens in in some weird way yeah i mean Without looking under the hood or someone explaining it, I mean, yeah, it's just speculation at this point. So the next one is, uh, in the example above, the heat element of both tenant weapons is combined with the cold mod to produce blast, regardless of whether the heat element is innate or a bonus to the weapon. This seems to ju- suggest if a single elemental mod is present in your build, then the game has to pick which of the two singular elements of your weapon will be combined to your modded element, the game will prioritize and choose heat over toxin or electricity. Yeah. Yeah. 
Uh, the next one is, people seem to use different reasons why the progenitor element isn't last, but maybe it is as simple as both innate and progenitor are added at the end, but which one added first is based on the inherent order of different elements. Seems like the order of importance is heat, electricity, cold, toxin. I wonder if this rule can be used to explain all the weirdness with all these types of weapons, with all these types of weapons, yeah. Yeah, which I yeah, think no, it's, 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 I bet you one dollar it's alphabetical based on the, the in-game stuff. Spaceman. Spaceman. Hidden, hidden name, hidden placeholder names. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. That's my theory. Anyway. Uh, it, it's about, it's above my pay grade, so. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I'm, I'm going with that theory as well. Yeah. Cool. I think it. That's it for the the replies, isn't it? Yep. We managed to get through that one. Well, it was just. It's just more thing. Well, the first one was just cool the topic, and we were we were just spitballing everywhere on that one. Whereas this yep. one is a very down to earth technical thing. How is this working? And I think you two have uh, pretty much bashed it out pretty pretty clearly. Yeah. Cool. Or right. Mm-hmm. Talking out of our ass as well. That's also yeah. possible. Ooh. Good old ass talking, I want to say. Right, should we move on to the graphs then? What do you break? What? No, what no, no. Break? Do you want to take a break? At all. Uh, do you want graph one? Uh, I want you to turn off the topics first. But the topics! I have to find the button for that. There we go. And graph one. So these cool. are graphs. Right. What are these, you know? So. These are graphs from where <laughs> I kind of want to just leave it at that. No, these these are the graphs from last week's questions that we asked the audience. You know, here, here they are, these are the polls. So, you know, uh, all related to uh, the the new war changes and railjack stuff. So last week, the first graph asked, uh, "What are the your minimum expectations?" for the aftermath of the new war imagine i actually asked that as the question instead of what is actually written there which is really bad what so <laughs> well what are you minimum expectations for after the new war i clearly wrote that when i was tired okay <laughs> so <laughs> right so 38 percent. so this this was a multiple choice so you could choose multiple of these um, 38% of the audience said that they wanted to see the Murex permanently affixed atop the Unum, right? Uh, 43% said that they wanted to have, you know, uh, Corpus and Grenier gameplay modes. Mm. And 76% said that they wanted the Plains of Eidolon to be basically permanently deformed. So, my question to Nick what would you like to see after the new war? What what are your expectations? Yeah, I think the one that people are most like the, the the one that people are clamoring for or whatever, I think that's the one that's the least likely to happen. And that's for the reasons we've talked about before with just like player choice and permanence and what happens if you chose one thing and I chose one thing and mm. then how do we move forward from that? Mm. In this case, it's going to be how are we gonna be able to play together? How can I play together with someone who hasn't done the new war quest yet in the mm-hmm. place of Eidolon if it's gonna look a certain way for me and it's gonna look another way for him? It can only be some sort of cosmetic change, but you'd have to have like stuff, ruins, the hitboxes, whatnot. I don't see how that's possible. It's one thing with like Lua, right? Oh. We've done that quest. We've brought Lua back from the void. Now Lua exists in the skyline in in the Plains of Eidolon, and it didn't before. But but that's just a skyline, just a static image. But actually deforming Plains of Eidolon, I don't think you can do it, because I think it would break the game in terms of being able to like just play bounties together with someone who hasn't done the quest yet. Um, you can attach a Murex to the Unum. Because you can't go there anyway, <laughs> so it's not gonna, it's not gonna change anything. Yeah, for but but yeah. if you haven't done the quest, <laughs> yeah, right, yeah, it's the, the same thing. Yeah, no, you know, yeah. If you haven't seen, they can make that as a cosmetic change that triggers once you do the quest that you don't see it yeah. until you've done the quest, and it would make no yeah, difference yeah. to the actual anything. We should be stupid. 
I hate it. <laughs> no, the, we, we have had uh, talked about this in the past. Uh, the only way you could do it, because Nick, Nick's completely right on there, oh, the ball, it's, it's the same issue World of Warcraft had for the longest time, and they didn't want to do anything like changing it until they, they came up with the excuse of you just basically time travel between two versions of the same zone. But the only way Warframe could do it is to have like, now that we have Steel Path, is that you'd click a button to actually go onto the post post new war timeline solar system the only way to do it if they actually want to make some permanency in the game they hate doing that they they hate doing stuff where they just break the player base in in two um, uh, but you wouldn't technically because you're just basically making another solar system as if we made the tau solar system you're expanding the map but you're just expanding it to a time zone you're not yeah when you click on a node you can't select the future node but you have to do that i know it's putting more nodes in the game and they have in the past squished the amount of nodes but it's the only way to do it Base in a basic way. Well, you can you can you can throw this out as a quality quality of life thing, right? If you're a new player and you're like mastery rank one or two and whatever, and you go to to uh, Cetus and you want to do some bounties, and you go out to the Plains of Eidolon and you just join up a team and everyone's flying around in arc wings and everyone's just shooting everything out of the sky. <laughs> you got you got all these Grenier airdrops. They don't even have time to spawn in before they're just wiped. <laughs> And you're just standing there as a master rank one player, and you just, you have no idea what's going on. Yep. And then suddenly the bounty is over, everyone's back at the, the gates in one second, and you're like, hold up, I don't even have a K drive yet. I have to actually run back to the gate. And so the question is, would that improve your experience as a new game player to not <laughs> play with master rank 30 people so that you can actually experience these bounties the way that they were intended to be experienced but it would actually yeah. be good for the game if we chucked all the veterans into the new post-apocalypse <laughs> planes of Eidolon instead right I but the yeah. problem the problem with that is though uh you have to make it that those veteran players don't lose out on something that was available on the old planes yeah. but won't be available on the new ones let's say i mean are Eidolon's gonna spawn as normal on this new smashed post-war sentient Planes, which doesn't really make sense. It's like the sentients have taken over the planes and everything, and then there's still these at night time, there's still these broken sentients going, Where's me arm? Where's me arm? It's like, oh just just don't ignore and the sentient is like, just ignore cousin Larry. We don't we don't care we don't talk about him anymore. He's like in the background, where's me arm? It's like, right, well, we're fighting some Murexes over here. So like, it, it doesn't make sense for them to spawn if they've completely dominated the planes. So you'd have to give the no, no, no. uh those Remember, players access to both. Deformed. We're saying deformed. Not we, you know, you don't have to see um, the Murex are still attacking. You know, the the new war events are still happening and things. You could just like, oh yeah, you know, um, Hex uh, Stiletto just gone, it's just wiped off the face of the um, mm. planes. Hex Stiletto. It's oh, yeah, one yeah, of the yeah. locations. It's just oh, one of the locations yeah. in Plains Fidelon. Oh, okay. But I think it's it, if, it, if it if oh, it I'd be so depressed if we get to the point that the no war, the new war has nothing but cosmetic effects in the solar system. That it's like okay, yeah, we've updated the planes a bit and put a few more craters over there and a few more things over there, and still you have these idlers going, "Where's me? Where's me? Where's me? I'm always in there. My friends came and left, and you killed them all. But where's me? I'm still got a tree stump. It, it would just be so like you're so pathetic. <laughs> They are now, aren't they? They are. <laughs> Deary me. Uh, but which which one of these things would you like the most, Nick? Uh, what does that mean, Grenier and Corpus uh, gameplay modes? Oh, like, so you know it's, how, very, it's very open-ended. No, you know how they showed in the... Did you see Tenno Live? Well, obviously. Yeah. I've even yeah. watched his reaction to it. Oh, really? <laughs> Yeah, I, I wish yeah. at the end though you summarize. Yeah, the end, I wasn't watching it the whole way through. I already felt at the end of that video that you should have done a sort of like uh, get rid of all the footage and then do your own summary of your whole view of what it meant. Because uh, I was yeah. watching through it, waiting for that, and but you kind of talked as you went, and then you just you went, oh, it's over, and bye. I was like, oh, but but, but what do you think? What do you feel? <laughs> I need your hopes and your dreams <laughs> from this. Yeah. Um, yeah, but yeah, know. like should have done that. Would, would you like to see a gameplay mode? Where you can play as a corpus like Vesso or play as a grenier like Carl one. So beyond just in the quest, so that it becomes a thing yeah, beyond part. just the quest. Yeah. That's just but but then you're kind of asking like, do you want Warframe to have dark sector mode? Because then we're going back to like just we're we're taking away the parkour and we're just doing cover shooter, right? 
that's yeah. how you do it. Yeah. That's how you work. That's how you can incorporate cover shooter into into Warframe. But uh, have to, they have to be not a Warframe doing it. Yeah, but an example of what they could do with that is they could add in a conclave PvP mode, which in the lore is you training the Grenier and the Corpus against each other to practice against the sentient. So that there is a conclave mode where you can play as corpus, which are obviously limited and, you know, as you say, don't have all the crazy jumping things, but control mowers and you can play as Grenier and it would actually be a balanced PvP mode. Cool idea. Probably not for me because I'm just not that into PvP, yeah, yeah, yeah. but uh, but uh, I wouldn't mind it. I yeah. think it, it would probably work. Mm. Um, that's, an that's just an example. I mean, there's other things you could do. I mean, it doesn't even have to be controlling... Orpus and Grenier to play too much, but it could just be, you know, a um a mini game mode or a side game mode or just just extra content, you know, beyond Warframe bit. Like, it was just, just examples. Like I have wrestled with this question so many times, and it, again with the divide video series where I'm trying to like just <laughs> Hello? Stopping. Oh, yeah, we're still here. here for a sec. Oh, sorry, we're still here. You still there? Am I back? Yes, yeah. we're back. Sorry. Right. Ah. So the divide game mode, a uh, 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 video. Sorry, yeah. is what I got to. Yeah, yeah. No, but 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 my whole thing with that was that like we we make these demands sometimes to the developers without really stopping and thinking what it is we actually want for ourselves and like mm. what what do we want the game to be, and it's like I know what I when I pop up Warframe, I, like I know why I play the game and like I. I at this point, the movement and the parkour and all of that, it's such an integral part of the gameplay experience. Where it's like, if you take that out, would I want to play that? I'm not sure. But Maybe what if you're playing as a Grenier and you could deploy on demand the balloon uh, bunker things? <laughs> blunts. You could deploy blunts. blunts at any point in time. <laughs> that is a pretty sweet deal. Yeah. Lose um, parkour. Get your own blunt. I guess it could be cool. I don't know. I guess it could be cool. Just sometimes, sometimes it can be fun to just take stuff away from players, even though they hate, they hate to hear that. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes <laughs> they do. I, I think you... if I have to pick about out of all of these ones, yeah, sure. Uh, Corpus and Grenier gameplay modes sound that adds something to the game, which takes it in somewhat maybe new direction, where you can like interact with the game in new different ways. I think just changing cosmetically how the plane's vital on would look because that's the only way you can do it. I think that's boring. I don't think that adds anything. And the Murex attached to the Unum is also just a cosmetic change. I don't think that actually changes anything. Mm -hmm. So yeah, if I get to pick one of these three to put into the game, sure, give me Corpus and Grenier PvP. That sounds great. <laughs> cool. <laughs> Next, uh, Graph Loss. <laughs> uh, do you like the idea of Corpus versus Grenier Conclave? So, I'm uh, ambivalent toward it. I sure it's good for the game. There are people who would enjoy it. I probably wouldn't, but I, I don't mind it existing. Yeah. Unfortunately, my numbers have actually changed because literally, as we're recording this, someone has just gone and updated the numbers. So, uh, eighteen percent said no, and uh, eighty-six percent said yes. I think yes, it would be good for the game. I still don't think anyone would play it. No. I think they would. I think they would. If you put like Carl, as if it was like hero characters as well, I think people would play oh it. God. And it would be balanced. Oh, well, like Battlefront. There is, Battle. there is yes. some precedent yeah. to this. There is some precedent to this. That's, that's Mass Effect 3. Because Mass Effect 3 is a game, you play it because it's a single player game and you want the story and you want the Mass Effect experience oh. and all of that. That's that's the hook. That's where you got the game. Then it turned out that Mass Effect 3 has an excellent, excellent multiplayer pvp system as well where you play as a vorcha where you play as a as a uh, a sorry or or as a krogan or whatever and and it's just different from the normal game experience and it's like surprisingly solid and surprisingly fun so i uh, fi finally we've had somebody on that actually remembers this game because i never played it but i know of it did it actually like have different things week by week as well so it felt like an evolving war over time um like some so you didn't fight the same enemies every week or there was like an objective every week or something i remember reading about it but i could find no information on it i swear no, because... just, they, they, just, they, add, they added stuff to it over time like right you couldn't play, they couldn't play as a vorcha for like until like a year later or something huh. and you found like new classes and stuff as loot boxes 
So, so you know, that probably wouldn't fly today. But hey, man, back mm-hmm. in those days, loot boxes were but, A-OK. Were they loot boxes for money or just in-game loot boxes? Um, no, I think that... Uh, I, don't, I don't remember. Uh, I don't remember. But you could find weapons. You could find weapon mods. You can find new classes to play, stuff like that. Hmm. Yeah, you had to earn creds and stuff and unlock loot boxes. Well, as long as it's not for money, I don't think people would mind too much. Unless one of the classes which is better than the other classes kind of thing. But yeah, anyway. Well, they all played differently. They just played like, it just felt like you were playing a different game, yeah. depending on which class you were. All right, let's move on to the next one, which is, do you like the idea of scaling up the Unum? Uh, 100% said yes. <laughs> so do you want to explain? So, <laughs> so yeah, so when we were talking last week with widescreen John, we were proposing the idea of what if you could, you know, because uh, he and us, I think, were all fascinated with the idea of what is inside the Unum and what if you could actually ascend the tower and mm. effectively chase the Murex off the top of it, you know? So yeah, that 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 was the idea. So you know, would you like the idea of Ascending the tower, and apparently everyone says yes. Hear me out. Okay. This is something that, like, it might be an Orokin thing, it might be a Sentient thing, but um, I would love the idea of impossible space being introduced as sort of like an Orokin thing, because we already see it in Railjack, sort of, when you go inside of a, of a Murex for those Sentient anomalies or whatever. There's a yeah. lot of goddamn impossible space going on inside. It's bigger on the inside than it is on the outside. And I want that to not just be a sort of like, yeah, that's just how we made the game or whatever. That's just we designed the level. I want that to be intentional. I want it to be like, yeah, that's because they use void stuff or not, well, not with the sentience, but like there is some sort of tech where we can, where we can sort of like crunch reality and time and space inside there. So it's actually, it actually is bigger on the inside than it is on the outside. I think that would be super cool. There's an entire... I would love it if you go inside the city, the Tower of Dune and there's a goddamn city inside of it. Oh. That would be so cool. That would be... I could totally see that for the Unum. For the Murex... I kind oh, yeah. of want it to sort of, like, grow. Like, that That one still works on the physical planes, like, you know, the, the physical dimensions of three-dimensional space, but... I I would just like it to change shape, just change the interior, change you know stuff like that. Um, I get where you're coming from because yeah, you 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 get out of your railjack, you go board the Murex, and the inside of it is absolutely freaking massive. Yeah, but, but there's yeah. loads of bits inside which show outside of space, but they look like broken platforms and things. But from the outside, the Murex just looks like a giant red hair clip. Yeah, but but, I but, mean, it, at- but there is some sort of like overlap there because you can actually see the railjack when you're inside the the murex. You can yeah. see the railjack on the outside. Yeah, but look at the oh gosh, what's the name of the damn thing? The Orpheus ships. Those things look way too small for the the volume of space that's inside them. Yeah. Kinda. Uh, I don't know. It's like the sense of scale gets a bit messed up there. But if you actually fly really, really close when you're in Arcwing, um, you'll see that the sense of scale is a bit distorted from the fact that the railjack is a bit bigger than you think it is, and you sort of like you scale it to yourself. So you get this idea in your head that the railjack is about the say size of a warframe or whatnot. But when you actually go outside in Arcwing and you fly really, really close to that pillar. You'll see that it's actually, it's actually quite big. Mm. It's bigger than you think it is. Probably, probably not as big as it is on the inside, though. Yeah, it's it's difficult to say, really. Um, I don't get me wrong. I do like the idea of the whole um, folding space and everything. It's just a case of. Is that an avenue that D wants to explore? Because I bet you bottom dollar they would just say void magic and like yeah. But then how would that it. work for the sentience? Yeah, no, the sentience can't use void magic. You're right. So, well, yeah, oh, so, okay. so it works in the tab, but not the um thingy. Shit. Yeah. There we go. Drop yeah. down. Fine. Yeah. Got four. 
Okay. Ugh. My brain just yawned. Right. Okay. So the next graph is how do you feel about the current state of uh, play with Railjack? 9% said negative, 39% said neutral, and 52% said positive. Mm. Yeah. Oh, no. So neutral. Ah, so. Okay. So it's neutral. Okay. Oh, yeah. I thought it was negative for a sec. Yeah. That, that's good. That's good. I'm positive. I've always liked Railjack from the start. I know that it's not what what we thought we would get or whatever. I understand all of that. That being said, like I I've always thought it was a cool addition to the game. I love the actual space combat. I, like, there's another example of like, is this what I installed Warframe for? Is this what I want when I play Warframe? I didn't think so, but then I tried it and it turned out turned out that like, yeah, yeah, I want this. This is cool. And I Void storms are great. The rewards for void storms are great. I love it. Uh, corrupted holokies, eh? But they're fixing that. Yeah. They, they, how it is? They normally fix it later. And my, my only negative feeling about Railjack, which I think hampers the whole system, is the way the missions end. It really feels like they they just copy and pasted or the same code for how a normal mission ends, and then try to implement it, and it just doesn't work because. It doesn't feel, it feels to, it kind of ends and ends Thanks. again when you completely leave. And it just feels really disjointed and you have to go into it separately. It just, I almost feel like they should almost get rid of the Lasset and we just do all missions from starting on the Railjack to make you mm. really feel like you're on it. But instead, because you start on the Lasset, maybe if you had the option when you log in to just start on the Railjack rather than the Lasset, I'd pick mm. that. I'd much prefer my Lasset is something I have to go into rather than my Railjack. And, that, and give full access to all the maps from the Railjack navigation rather than the Lasset navigation and just go from there and you return to your Railjack in neutral space at the very least. But just the to, to bounce between mission to mission to mission just feels so clunky in Railjack. It's clunky. That's, yeah. it's clunky. I wish they could improve also, that code. It's just that's the only bit left, I feel. I feel that what, what you're proposing there, Loz, is a can of worms. Yes, because, yeah, yeah, I'd appreciate that. Like... I feel, oh yeah, so I'm on my rail, I started on my railjack, I want to do a railjack mission, oh wait, why am I now traveling in my Lisset to someone else's railjack, well, but I was on my railjack, it's because of matchmaking. It, well, you could put in a uh, railjack loading animation for people who started from their railjack, or you could just accept that because you never see... Yeah, I guess you're right on that one. But that's just a loading yeah. screen. If a loading screen is the only thing hold this back on that, then I don't really have a problem with it. I, I would what still if, choose it. What if, what if, uh, you're flying in on your railjack, so like the loading screen is your railjack. You, you, you see like a cinematic cutscene, sort of like, you know, jumping from the vents and things. Your railjack just sort of like uh, zooms in, fires you from in the, the torpedo tube into their railjack, and then fucks off. <laughs> I yeah, would love it if they did a slight redesign to the model of the railjack and stuck the Lasset onto the back of the railjack and just be done with it and screw the whole orbiter section for now. Yeah, I kind of agree with that. Yeah. Mm. We'll say though, I was one in one way, in one regard, there where I was more positive toward railjack before than I am right now. Is I don't like the matchmaking changes. I don't like the fact that you can't choose to host railjack anymore, uh, which you could before. Could because you? like it's it's so seldom that I actually even get to play like a public game and actually have my railjack. It's just so yeah. random. Yeah. Uh, and it was in there. And it was in there and they took it out. So it's, but, you can't tell me that it doesn't work because we know I, it does. But I think the problem is like maybe it was making matchmaking too difficult. There were so many open games that were waiting to start because everyone wanted to take their railjack. I think that was part of it. I also think I I seem to recall Steve saying something about once they introduced dry docks to relays so that you can access the missions from relays as well, that also further complicated matchmaking when everyone got to choose to be host uh, or, or not. Yeah. I don't know. It could be something to that. That being said, I miss being able to choose if I wanted to go in my rail deck or someone else's. I like it. Yeah, elective host is also something for, for even the normal games we've been asking for for years, isn't it? Yeah. You know, when we know someone has a good connection, someone has a bad connection, the game still goes, oh, that person's the host. Like, no. Yeah. I've talked to so many people in game who are just like, guys, I'm sorry. 
I have potato internet. Yeah. The game made me host. I don't want to be host. I apologize. I the thing that I'm thinking of at the moment, uh, a solution that I'm thinking is at the very least when you're between missions in Railjack, allow the players to swap the Railjack. So effectively force a host migration. So if like, you know, uh, for example, Nick, you wanted to use your Railjack, mine's crap. You, mm. You're like, hey, you know, let's let's have the, the Railjack, you know, and then we just, I don't know, a vote system, you know, use Nick's Railjack, yes, no, everyone clicks yes, and then it swaps... You know, to Nick being I guess I guess the counter argument would be that like you can already do that with pre-made squads, mm. but in public games it would have to be between missions. In that case, I guess I don't yeah. know. But I'd love so, to see the percentage of public missions which actually go beyond one mission. Most yeah. of them are just in and out. Yeah, is it really worth the dev time? Ah, but my th th feeling is that if this was introduced, this could actually improve the longevity. Of the public missions because you so, have to like, pick a round jack. I'm no, not going to stay yeah, on a mission. Like, I've got a... because I'm doing my no, relics. But... I don't want them out, or I'm doing my sister. I don't really care about. Oh, let's stay because we'll swap no, to my round jack. No, no, but that was your objective was to do the the system bug out. Yeah, right. But if you had the option to just keep like if you were there to just do void uh, storms. Right, mm -hmm. and you want to go from voice on to voice on, but the 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 railjack you started on is struggling. It's not that great. You could go, hey, my railjack's um, kind of better than this. Do you want to swap to my railjack? Right. But I guess then, I see. I guess I see that people would just be like, nah. Yeah. I'll just I'll just jump out and just pick another random public game instead. Yeah. Or hell, just if you're at that point, just get some better crew members. Just get just keep yeah, just keep picking different missions or just. Try something else or level up your own one. I, I, I really, I, th I like. I know it'd be a good addition, but I don't think people will really use it that much. Okay. Should we go to the last? Um, card? so the last card was. What do you think could help Railjack the most? So seventeen percent said better Arcwing integration. Uh, clearly, they're wrong. <laughs> be a hundred percent. Um, <laughs> uh, thirty-four. So thirty-five percent said more base mission types for Railjack, and forty-eight percent said uh, multi-Railjack missions taking down capital ships. Capital ships. We need to fight capital ships. Why don't we fight capital ships? Why are they just static bricks? I'm surprised that you haven't said more. Like base mission types for Railjack. I've, I've wanted my whole capital ship, uh, uh, the crossing yes, point. Yes, but thing. you also wanted more than just exterminate for ages. Yes, well, I want all options on this list, but capital ships, no, man. I'll take it. Capital. No, uh, capital ships. So I have to pick one. It's capital just ships. Capital. Bloody fight yeah. capital ships. It's annoying to me that they're just like, oh no, there's a green a galleon. Not moving. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Doesn't seem to be doing anything. <laughs> Yeah, if I have to choose between do I want capital ships or do I want defection missions in Railjack? <laughs> so, is it, so the so the idea of the capital ships, I mean, that you'd be able to blow up subsystems, that they'd be able to blink in and out of your mission. So the endless mission I pitched, which I'll shorten it down, I know, Drew, I know it's long to pitch, but is that yes. you, uh, the, and I even pitched this back in Arcwing days, is that your uh, Railjack goes to a transfer point between space, because we know space isn't easy to transverse in so a system. You have to go through set points. That's how the relays and things work. Uh, not the relays, the uh, junctions? The junctions? Mm -hmm. Yeah, things like that work. So what it would be is you're camping out your railjack on a grenier or corpus transfer point, and at first, like, the, it's an endless game mode, so you can stay as long as you want. The first time, a small ship turns up, and then, next, then you finish that wave, you might mm. blow it up, or you might just disable it, or do X much damage before it leaves, or, you know, whatever. And then the next wave, two ships turn up, and then the next wave, a galleon turns up, and then a galleon with two escorts turn up. And eventually, because they detect that you're causing problems at this uh, transfer point, they send more and more ships to try and stop you. But and then you know they obviously blink out because they're trying to escape and everything. So yeah, it's, it's an endless game mode because of it. Yeah, which I think would be cool. Oh, and you can super cool. subsystems. Maybe you could also yeah. board the ships as well. I, I'm a bit dubious on that one, but maybe, maybe, maybe not. But you know, so you know, on a grenade galleon, it's like, oh, quick, take out the engines or take out the communication relay. And if you take it out quick enough, it 
causes the next wave not to be as tough. You know, there'd be loads of things you could do, or maybe you could attack the cargo hold, and then the cargo drops, and you get extra drops. You know, it, it, it just spaceships, man. They need to come in and leave and try... <laughs> Space battles. Yeah. No, it sounds super rad, because, like, <laughs> my issue has been with, like, the overall balance of how much is space combat, how much is Warframe inside of the thing, and it used to be all space combat, mm. and now we have normal missions, but now they went too far in the other direction, and now it's like almost no space combat at all anymore. Yeah. It's just like a little bit of space combat, and then you do Warframe stuff, and you're in a survival mission for 20 minutes or whatnot, and that's, uh, that's mm, that, that could be done better. But I agree. I just more do more cool stuff with space combat, introduce more layers. We already have fighters, and then we have cruise ships. Toss in the next one. Toss in something bigger. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm all for it. That's, uh, that's exactly what I would want. <laughs> Z- Zeno's sad because you didn't pick a hot queen. Uh, well, I'm always sad about that, but that's also the base mission types one, not the multi railjack mm. mission to take down the capital ships. Capital I ship. like the capital ships. I'm going to convince everyone, hey, every guest that we have on, we're having capital ships to fight. It's going to be amazing. <laughs> Anyway, right. I think it's so a good idea. Let's um, let's put the the graphs away for now, and move on to the supporter questions. Yes. Okay. So these are supporters who have paid Zeno on Patreon. Mm-hmm. Uh, so first we have from Zrugal. Oh, before we start the supporter questions, I'm going to ask everyone to make sure you're subscribed to the channel, like the video, and share it if you can. It really helps. Zrugal. Uh, Zrugal also asks, did you look into getting a War Report jingle? I wanted no. also a jingle, I wanted cards as well so that we separate out the sections, but we'll, we'll get to it eventually. We've, we're only 400 episodes in, Zrugal. We'll get there. We'll get there. <laughs> we'll get there. Hey, hey, if, if, if what's it called? what I'm trying to achieve with the anime podcast actually comes to fruition, I'm about to make Lars's life shit tons easier. Well, wow, and you're going to hack my machine. Poor machine. <laughs> anyway, anyway, moving on. Big Beard Bear 93. In the new war trailer, we got to see the sentients attack Cetus and Fortuna, but why didn't we see anything from the Necrolis? Knowing that Father has helped us fighting off the sentients with Necromex. Is this a silly place? <laughs> I think one, because he'd fight off the sentients with Necromex is the answer. And two, I don't think the sentients would do a good job against a big mound of infested going gobble, gobble, gobble the whole time. So, and three, no, it's also sure. not... Well, no, it is a big objective because they put the bloody heart of the void down there, didn't they? I'm pretty here's sure. What, here's, here's what I think. I think that Lloyd can just chuck Deimos back into the <laughs> void whenever he wants to. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, Deimos was in the void? Yeah. I thought no. it was just off the origin. I no. thought it was off the the junction system. I thought no. that was it was in the void. And what happened was that the Entrati family had been in the void and they've been isolated in there for too long and they were starting to go crazy and they're starting to forget who they were. And Lloyd, as some sort of like just security protocol or whatever, he was like, Oh shit, we need outside help because these guys are going crazy. And he clicked the button and yanked that, Deimos that, out of the void. That doesn't make sense. That doesn't that that's like putting the car engine inside the car engine. Yes. Right? How on earth would the car engine work <laughs> if when it's, it's inside, inside itself? Fu- yeah. That doesn't No, I'm That's I'm, what they did. I'm no no, I'm pretty <laughs> sure. I'm pretty sure, right? I'll go and I I'll fucking find a citation. It, the whole point was that they just moved Deimos away from Mars. Right? So, like, no one could find... It was just a drift in the origin system. Are you looking this up now? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, while you're looking that up, I'll read Thalian's points. Thalian. In the past, DE put out a call for more lines for Audis from the community. Do you think the real reason that nothing has come of this is because DE's team in charge is now suffering from deep depression due to the sense of humour the fan base displayed? <laughs> <laughs> um, a, never ask the internet to do anything like submit stuff or do a poll because every poll's a goal <laughs> what, what, should, what should we name this boat <laughs> Boaty McBoatface <laughs> let's redesign the British flag 
It had the girl again the glove at the front of it. <laughs> really? Yeah, have you not seen that one? Yeah, the, the, the winning oh. entry was uh, the British flag, the Union flag, with the girl yeah. again logo in the middle of it and that one. Um, <laughs> and then there's the famous one of um, the McDonald's make your own burger and we'll get the ones to it. And if uh, if you've not seen the Internet Historian video on that one, I think it's in the no. business video. I did show it to you. I have to show it again. Maybe I forgot. <laughs> like one of the you could you could choose what you add up. And I'll just the only yeah. one I remember off the top was just like somebody had added cheese from bottom to top, like twenty bits of cheese, and refer entitled it Ronald's Creamy Surprise. <laughs> <laughs> they were br it was brilliant, you know. <laughs> so never get a community to do things on submission if you want a serious response. Never works. <laughs> right, uh, the last point from Thalen is, since Warframes are, to all intents and purposes, people that have been partially subsumed by the helmet infestation, is it possible that the not safe for work theories might be right and it's possible for Warframes to have children? If so, which two frames would create the most unholy of overpowered offspring? This question brought to you by Pornhub. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. Uh, <laughs> what the fuck, Thalian? It um, would have to be Limbo and something, I think. Look, look, we all know that Rhino is the hung warframe. <laughs> <laughs> You've seen the design. <laughs> you know what that is. <laughs> you this can't unsee it now. That's what he's asking. <laughs> no, I can't. Anyway. No, 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 no. I'm just trying to think. Like, what are the most OP Warframes? I, t I totally agree with Limbo. Like Limbo plus Trinity, seeing as Trinity doesn't have a range on Blessing, so you could just turn Blessing into a Limbo does. thing. and so does. does she have a range now? But she's had a range for ages. Oh, I hate it. I loved it when it was map-wide. Um, <laughs> it the, it's the Affinity range. Oh, is it Affinity range? That's still pretty yeah. big. Yeah, it's still pretty big, but it was the only way that they could actually go, and this is how we make other healers viable. <laughs> Instead of having one that is broken. <laughs> okay, so what are you going to go? Limbo plus what? Actually, <laughs> no, I'm Limbo plus defer. Nyx, because then you've got I'm mind control and void power. I'm, I'm going to defer to Nick with his experienced knowledge of really broken Warframes, right? <laughs> what is the most broken Warframe apart from Limbo? Um... Are, are we talking like just in like in in the lore, or are we talking like just what abilities? I think it means abilities that you can think of. Yeah, which you think is most broken. Uh, like Limbo isn't broken in that he's powerful. Limbo is broken in that he always breaks the game. Yeah, exactly. And you yeah. always have to 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 just rebalance fix, things. Yeah, fix stuff based on Limbo. Yeah. Um. Ah. Uh, but that's just because he can shut off the game. <laughs> he can just make it stop existing. <laughs> what about Limo and Equinox? You've effectively got three really infuriating wolf. You know, like, oh yeah, I've got um, an AoE, better world on fire, and I've just frozen everyone. And I'm invincible. Yes, there we go. We'll go with that. Right. Moving... Before, I just want to check, did Nick manage to find oh, yes. his source on whether or not Deimos was put in the void, or... No, I'd have to dig further. From the Lloyd voice lines, he just says that he's re-phasing into the Martian orbit or whatever, but it doesn't exactly say where you, they're coming from. But I'm so certain I've heard this, if it was from a... God phasing that, phasing would imply, or... yeah, I mean, to re-phase something... Yeah, you just bring yeah. it into alignment. Then you would say to realign with the orbit, not reface. I oh, know you do have phases it's... of the moon, I guess. Yeah, and it is a literal moon. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Oh well. I mean, anyway, I'm moving on to it. the comments on last week's episode of Terra Clock. So first of all, Zeruko <laughs> says chaptering a podcast is cool, but the episode this episode doesn't have chapters. Lol. And I did check this. There was no. It didn't break down to chapters. Oh, Do you have an idea why? Because, yeah, it's probably because the the last one I didn't put in. Um, so basically, if any of so if the later chapters have zeros like zeros on the time, yeah. 
It treats that as the start. It didn't have any chapters at all, the whole episode. Really? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Um, Did I forget to add in the times? No, and I checked that there was a zero, zero, zero. I don't know if there was anything more required, but that's what I saw. Yeah, um, no, the quote, the last one, the outro. Oh. Uh, I didn't put a time for the outro. It's just zero, 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 zero. Oh, and because as a result, so it then reads that as it, and then doesn't the see anything afterwards. Oh, uh, yeah. right. YouTube. There we go. Sorry. Right, Nick Evans says, uh, to answer what is your f least favorite mission type, I would have to say defection, because rather than just being a boring timer, it's a boring timer coupled with bad AI pathing, led on with the same problems that Rescue had before it was updated to let the AI teleport to you. It's something that I find has been ba find has been so badly executed, and I avoid the mission missions like the plague. I mean, it's enough to just say it's an escort mission. That's, <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's the reason. That's the reason why it's the worst mission in the game. It's oh, completely correct. I completely forgot. In topic one, I was they were saying about disruption, and I was going to complain about how disruption is just doesn't make any sense. They were like yeah. saying how disruption was like one of the game modes where someone on Lotus is helping you or whatever. But it's like it makes no logical sense. You just like, no, 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 no. Despite uh, the hate towards disruption, it's one of the few game modes that has someone other than the Lotus telling us why we're helping. Yeah, but we're out there protecting livelihood against tangible villains and rewards are doing so come up I from mean, the people we help. We don't help anyone. I, mean, <laughs> I can only assume that they're referring to Little Duck, and I do my damnedest to ignore everything she says. So <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, Skyguard1000 says, I like to listen to you guys while I work. Will you be uploading to Spotify soon? We could, I don't know, I could look into it. There we go. That's the job for Zeno. And maybe for the anime podcast would help as well. I find Spotify is one load of people use for them, so maybe that'd be a good one to look into. Sure. Faber, just for clarification. Oh, yes, thank you for this, Faber, so much. Just for clarification, it wasn't Reb that said it was 200 to 300 pages long. This is the script for The New War. Yeah. It was one of the sound designers, after which Reb shushed them. Oh, that's uh, interesting. Oh, okay. Right. Yeah, because when she held it up, it did not look 200 pages long. Right. And, it's like, but, and she also, she, the way she held it up, she never showed it end on. She was always like, and yeah. here's the script for New War, everyone. Out of screen, out of hidden. Right. <laughs> you know, so yeah, it was quite interesting on that one. Uh, oh, and also from Faber. Okay, yes. Okay, so this is interesting. I have a question to both of you here from this. I, uh, so Faber says, I know I've already given my two cents about this whole what can we expect from the new war quest but i really want to state it in here again i personally would be completely fine with all the gameplay we saw during tenacon of those three characters so that's the carl yeah vimeo vimeo and teshin of those three characters to be 90 percent of what we see of them during the quest and that the remaining hours of the quest are just our Warframe. I don't even need the new enemy faction gameplay to be integrated into the rest of the game. I'm totally fine for it to be a one-off thing, which is only used to better the world building at the beginning of the quest to set the stage to be never seen again. Now, first of all, they said like 90%. I cannot believe that would be 90% because what would be the point no, of the entire... No, no, no. They are saying they are happy with 90%. Yeah, I know. I know, but for, I think 90% is a bad number to pick because there's no way that there would only be a small bit more if, if DE showed off the nope. entirety of that function as their Tenacon reveal and you get only a fraction more and then it's never used again. There's no way that would happen. But let's say nope. it's 45%. Let's say that you get double what you saw there. You got that and the same again and after that you never control other characters ever again outside the quest or even for the rest of the quest. Would you two be okay with that? No. No, absolutely not. Like, I'm fine. Like, if it's only in this quest, mm -hmm. and then you never play them again, so maybe the quest ends with all of them dying or whatnot, mm -hmm. that's one thing. But in that case, I want that quest to be, like, 10 hours long or something. Yeah. I, yeah. Well, yeah. That's, that's yeah. my fine long quest. <laughs> well, no, I, I'm with them. Uh, if, if they're going to kill them off, I really want to be able to, you know, I want to... Sorry. Bezo? Is it Bezo? Yeah, Vesso. Vesso. I want to play right. missions with him. I want. I, I want to see him upgrading his mowers. I want him like just managing to overcome Why? some missions. You can't and... remember his name. That... You don't care. It's a meme. You're not supposed to remember his name. That's the point. Um, uh -huh. I want to see him like get in an escape pod and fall down to Europa, and then you, you're surviving yeah. in the cold ice with him. And then in the end, he still dies. You're like, oh my god. You know, that's what I want. But if it's just like, oh, and we're done with him now. It's like, it's yeah, that, that's not. That's not. That's not going to give me the emotional impact. Like, yeah. I want. I want to. I want to get invested in these characters, and that's yeah. not going to happen in thirty minutes. No, no, let, let, to, like, let it simmer. Yeah, chip his mowers out of the ice to get some heat to survive. Yeah, yeah. And oh, oh, as he constructs a 
Oh, to blow up an ice cave so we can survive an ice storm, and he still dies. <laughs> that would be good. Yeah. Um, I yeah. personally would like it if what we saw was only a quarter, a quarter of okay. the them gameplay time. time. Yeah, yeah. Of them? No, no, yeah. not gameplay. Of, of the, them. Uh, yeah, yeah. All right. Hear me out. Hear me out. I'm calling it. Okay. Mm-hmm. Maybe not the ultimate, but maybe the penultimate or something. Mm-hmm. Um. Do you think, because like people are talking about like how this is going to tie in with the sentient Warframe that they're announcing, like Caliban mm-hmm. or something that's going to be, where it's like, oh, Balas is creating new Warframes, or like the sentients are creating Warframes, and they don't have the Tenno, but they might have something else that can control them. Do you think that Vesso, or not, not Vesso, Carl is going to fall under sentient control? And like, as the climax of the quest, we have to kill Carl. I think so. <laughs> yeah, well, you did have... Uh, Error with his mind control. Do not oh, be afraid. Do not be afraid. <laughs> so um, the theory that I'm running with, I don't know if Lars agrees. Um, the theory I have is that error is mind controlling the citizens of the origin system, and then Ballas is using the Kuva to transference the citizens, mind-controlled citizens, into Caliban or the mass-produced Calibans so that um, they have, like, an army of Warframes. That's cool. Yeah, and maybe. I've, I've seen the... Have you guys... No, I'm not going to... I'm not going to say what it's references because th- there's another piece of media that, that has this as sort of, like, a big shocking twist later on. I've seen people throw out as the which would be super cool, would be mm-hmm. super cool, as the big shocking twist of the new war, yeah. would be that um, the sentients are already all but eradicated. Like, what you see, that's, that's what's left of them. And it's mm. almost nothing. And Ballas is just mind-fucking everyone by presenting, like, the sentient as this world-ending threat, when in reality he has, has like, other ambitions and, and, and other things he wants to accomplish. And this is all just a misdirection. That could be possible. Well, what he's misdirecting to would would have to be cool and everything, because I've been so annoyed that from the Tomb of the Sentience trailer, when they initially announced we're going to fight Sentience, and they just kept coming down, and you were like, oh, this is going to be unstoppable. They're going to be amazing. And if it just became, oh, no, there was nothing in the tomb. Oh, really? You know, we never fought them. Oh, look, it's, uh, what's his name? Oh, he's just kind of, Disappeared and dead now after the the uh, quest with uh, Octavia. Yeah, he's gone. Whatever. Oh yeah, there's the 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 sentience of the other solar system. Oh, they're not really there. Mother's dead. They're all dead. Really. It's like okay. If it, if it then moved to the the void and that, then okay. I wouldn't mind that as a bait and switch. But what has to come afterwards? Better be impressive because the sentience has been hyped up from the start. <laughs> Like, forever being like, oh, yeah, we're going to fight this unstoppable waves of sentience. Do, do you remember the actual first New War trailer where you see Tau and you see unstoppable yeah. hordes of so many sentience waiting to come fight us? And then it's just like, oh, but they're all gone. There's just one spaceship left and we blow that up. And it's like, oh. Well, the thing is, it's not new. We've already, from, from Warframe, from the start, we've, we've had to live with the fact that this game relies heavily on the idea of the unreliable narrator. It's true. Uh, it's true. Yeah. 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 yeah I, see, I would be fine with that, but I would hope that that Ballas's plans lead into some cool stuff. Yeah. 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 That's what I mean. If it's just like, oh, right, well, go back to fighting those Corpus and those mm. Grenier. <laughs> gotta, gotta, gotta fight them on. I don't know what map tile Zinni. Zinni exist anymore? We're gonna go, gotta go save Zinni <laughs> again. Yeah. Better Change level some weapons. <laughs> You know, it, it would just be really anticlimactic. So, the, as long as Ballas's plans beyond that are a uh, whoa, I'd be fine with that as a bait and switch. Yeah, that there, there's only a handful of sentience left. Yeah, that that'd be fine. But, but beyond, mm. where 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 are we at? I, I think you we were explaining out. something about the Calibans. Oh yeah, no, I I, I proposed my idea. I, okay, you know, I just like the idea of that. Right, the last point is from Nick Evans, and that's what happens when Zeno, Zeno doesn't tell people how to become a supporter. All the Patreon supporters get Thanos snapped. <laughs> <laughs> it's 
So that, um, yeah, there's a list at the end of all the Patreon supporters, and it just didn't turn up last week. Oh <laughs> it's, man, yeah, it's gone. Um, <laughs> I actually think the server's down at the moment, so the <laughs> so snap is still in effect. Okay. Yeah. Right, well, that is it for the supplies from last week's episode. Shall we move on to the memes? These yep. are all memes taken from the r slash meme frame subreddit. And oh, if on, you are... Hold on, hold I'm, on. I'm speaking to give you time to write down the time. Yeah, well, you've already put the first one up, haven't just you? Just a meme. I can, you can wait. You can wait. It's just there for people to watch while I'm spewing but time. Everyone's looking at the meme. And, and you're like... all missing out on the meme. Is that is that what you're upset no, about? No, I'm trying to get the time down. Try, I'll, put it, I'll put it off. Look, there we go. It's gone now. It's okay, gone. It's there gone. you go. Happy now? Okay. Right, so if yeah. you're ever bored... <laughs> Go to r slash meme frame. They have some lovely memes on there. People are producing memes daily, especially when there's an update out or anything from the uh, information wise, because people just go to town with it and make some great memes. There's also, uh, because I only show static memes, there's always the meme video of the week. Oh, I remember what it is this week. <laughs> In the description below, do go find it. There's a list of all the memes and the secret meme of the week, which is nightmare fuel this week. So if you think my beautiful face, which hopefully will be updated next week, is okay. And maybe you think I'm not that expressive. Go look like go watch the video if you want to see what I would look like hold with on, more hold, expression. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I've already seen it, so unfortunately the surprise is ruined. However, um I'm gonna ask um Nick, can you can you take a look at this right now? Just just, <laughs> just watch it. Me. It's okay. Right. It's Every, everyone everyone look at Nick's face, right? Make sure you got the sound turned up. <laughs> oh, I have to have the sound turned up. Okay, okay, okay. Well, make, okay. Make, you make don't sure really the need the sound. Uh, you no, okay, you, you, okay, can't, okay. you can't, kind of need to do it. It kind of adds. Uh, uh, wait, which one is it? That, have you linked it yet? Yeah, yeah, I've given it to him. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's nightmare fuel. It's so creepy. <laughs> That's horrible. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> It's very unpleasant. Oh, it's under my skin. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it is, isn't it? Those eyes and the teeth. Yep. <laughs> yep. Okay, you can close that tab now. Save yourself. I'm gonna. Let's go for the normal yeah. memes. Okay. Whew. Right, let's go for the normal memes. Okay. So, so meme number one. Yeah, slide. There we go. Uh, Limbo's backstory is lame. The first, we have okay. Gara. I sacrificed myself to protect the Unum from the sentience. Then we have Anairos. Wait, whoa, 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 whoa. Did she? I yeah. thought she was just, yeah. you know, an argument between a couple and the the guy <laughs> no. died. And a glass and rose. <laughs> Gera was the first Warframe who successfully killed a sentient, and she did it by strapping a nuke to herself and just walking <laughs> outside the gates and, and clicking the button. <laughs> Wait, how did you learn this? Is this it's, in the... It's, yeah, it's in the it's fish, fish stuff, yeah. No, Zeno's making a joke about the uh, the Gara quest that's, that's, stupid. that's, that's stupid, oh, yeah, where yeah. you get the bloody glass rose, and then they're, they're a couple now. On goes over there in the corner watching. <laughs> it's, just, it's just wrong. <laughs> okay. Uh, moving on to Anairos. I died defending a third world colony from the infestation. Uh, then we have Is Titania. Uh, I thought it was the yeah again. I think this is wrong. It's supposed to be the space people, wasn't it, or the sky people? I thought it was the sentience. I thought it was the Orokin. Yeah, I know. Sorry, sorry, Orokin. Yeah. But anyway, yeah, still yeah, yeah. died defending his third world colony from the Orokin. Fair enough. Uh, yeah. uh, Titania. I was killed while saving my creator who hated me from who hated me from Dak soldiers. I I don't know if that one's true. I've not watched the um the variant on it. <laughs> Limbo. I no, miscalculated. Titania <laughs> the Titania is the new Loka quest. It's the yeah. one where oh, yeah, I killed him. woman I killed him. turns into a tree. Back shoulders. Oh, yes, yes, of course. Yeah, 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 fair enough. But then we get to oh, Limbo. You know, what? Yeah. you know what? I think the Anoros one might be right as well. Because the, the, the point was when the, or the sentient, or when the Orkin showed up to kidnap everyone, it was like uh, Inoros wasn't there. He was just, I, I think he just died in combat. So he wasn't there to save them. Uh... Oh, fair enough. Maybe. But anyway, we get to anyway. Limbo. <laughs> <laughs> I miscalculated. Yep. <laughs> that's it. That's it. He just died because he missed his jump wrong and he didn't count correctly. Yep. Fair enough. Extremely yeah. pathetic in lower death. Yes. Well, much like Limbo, I miscalculated in doing that quest. Oh, God. Oh, oh the <laughs> people who didn't know, Xeno thought you got all of the, the bits from doing the first mission. So we ran that mission for him like five times, each time wow. doing multiple extractions and we couldn't figure out why we weren't getting limbo bits. 
apart from the helmet. <laughs> which wasn't was called a helmet back then, not their optics. Right, moving on to meme number two. <gasps> and Rohan will answer. When a random <laughs> Mastery Rank 1 player invites you to a game, the beacons are lit! Gondor calls for aid. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. We have to help those Mastery Rank 1, Mastery Rank 1 players. Uh, meme number three is going to take a while to read. Why does it have to be this way? Why can't we be loved? On the left, with the guy with one mic, no microphones. Harrow main spending 50% of the energy charging their three, risking HP damage by removing all shields to heal, searching for stray groups of enemies to regain shields and trying to headshot as many enemies as possible to support his team while fighting his team for kills. On the right, Trinity of all the microphones. Trinity mains, pressing two and four occasionally. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> a, a Trinity, like that. the best support, making it near impossible and ultra complicated for them to add any more supports to the game. Yep. Just to remind people, originally Trinity's four blessing was map wide with no range, instant cast, uh, invulnerability, full health, and full shields for I think up to like twenty seconds. Someone designed that. Some, yes, and then tried to put other supports of equal <laughs> to, with equal healing. It, in, yeah. Even if even if you just, the, I I remember the way I built my Trinity was making the ability as cheap as possible and as quick cast as possible, and so I just spammed four because I would instantly map wide heal. My, it didn't matter the vulnerability was only three seconds because I would be instantaneously at, at maximum range, giving all my allies maximum health and maximum shields. Oh no, their shields went max, max. Max, so I hid in a corner and went bubble. bubble, bubble, bubble. <laughs> Those are the days. Do, do you wanna do you wanna explain to Nick stuck in jitsu? <laughs> Trinity's link ability used to take it, it takes in damage you take and then puts it to nearby enemies. You know, the yeah. You know, yeah. It used to work on self inflicted damage as well. So you oh. used to be able to get a stug and just spin around on the floor with the stug, putting loads of little explosions around you. While having link up, <laughs> and you would just shoot explosions into enemies that had nothing to do with you, and just had a maximum range links, so they would spawn, and then explode because you put loads of explosive gel around your feet. Stuck in a jitsu. <laughs> they they removed that from the game, and I was sad. <laughs> I I think I soloed what was then tier three survival keys on in the void, um, up to like wave 40 by myself. And it was quicker than doing it with people because I could get the mobs in the spawn rooms. It was so broken. Right, moving on. Uh, meme number four. <laughs> and Nora chose this. Oh, what's this say? Your connection to VR chat timed out. Am I still in here? Hello? Oh no. Pause. There we go, right. I ran out of data, and now I'll finish this as two floating controllers and a small white bulb. Right, anyway, where we're we at, we're at memes. Um, we were at meme number four. And Nora chose this. <laughs> <laughs> We've had one intermission, Nightwave, yes. But what about second intermission? <laughs> <sighs> yep. Yep. So true. Right, that was meme number four. Meme number five. We farm, and therefore we are farmers. You can't tell me otherwise. We have the uh, Dre meme. Oric and Catalyst, Oric and Reactor, Exos Adapter, Kuva, Relic. No, no. Blue Potato, Golden Potato, Tobato, Pepper, and Cabbage. I do call them potatoes. What, what is it to my, Oh, is that the red... You would call them a red the, waffle of justice. Yeah, it is a red waffle of justice. People want to call it a tomato. <laughs> Never heard tomato before. No, but it works. Yeah. Kind of, if you imagine if it's you got a tomato a and then like... Of... No, but if you did a cross-sectional slice and then took out like a slice of the middle of the tomato, it would look like that. With like seeds on the insides and things. Yeah. I guess. Yeah. It's a bit of a stretch. But okay. Exactly. It's a waffle. Red waffle of justice. It has to be. <laughs> That's meme number five. Five, yeah. And then yeah, meme of six. This seems to be a new meme format going around, so I picked the, uh, the one I like the best. Okay. There's, there's a lot of these. An interesting title. I actually like the Rail Quest very much, but but what? The horror aspect, the horror aspects were a bit harrowing. <laughs> 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 there's loads of these, harrowing. like um, 
Oh god, what does what does um Clem call his uh cavat? A gra cata. Oh my god. <laughs> it's, it's, it's uh, god. Yep. No. Dad <laughs> level jokes there. Yeah. Yeah. Right, there okay. We well, that's, that's it for this week's memes. Uh, if you want to check out the secret meme, make sure you go into the description below where you'll find secret meme. Isn't that right, Lars? Indeed. Secret meme. But now we're going to move on to the community shout outs, and Lars has spoiled it already. So, <laughs> first community shout out is Worst MMO Ever Warframe by Josh Strife Hayes. Have you guys watched this? No. No, but I have it recommended to me. I ha People have said that I should watch it. Yeah, yeah. I, I did actually watch it. I, he has some really valid points in this, but the problem for me is he doesn't seem to go beyond Venus, right? Mm. He doesn't seem to... Because he, he basically says that there is no plot in the game whatsoever. So to me, that screams that he's, he's barely touched much of the, the game. And though he has really valid points to the fact that it should hook you a lot earlier after Vor's prize. Um, yeah, we all know that's a uh, a low point in the game. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but he also highlights the fact that the gameplay, the, the in-mission stuff is superb. But the problem is the out-of-mission stuff, the, the system designs. And again, like the, the big thing about mods being a huge barrier to entry. Yeah, you know, comes up. So honestly, it's worth a watch. I will, I will definitely yeah. watch it. It sounds great. Okay. The second community at, uh, shout out is this Ash sketch by Seema uh, Thrace. That is gorgeous. Ooh. I don't like the way that Twitter does this sort of uh, cuts the top and bottom off the picture on the preview. I, I know that the, the way to get around it is if you put two pictures, it actually gives you small versions of the whole picture. Whereas if you do one picture, it just does this. And it's mm -hmm. but they just awesome change that on mobile. On mobile, it doesn't like crop yeah. anymore. Yeah. yeah. But, uh, you know, doing it for desktop, I mean, what's that? Yeah. Effort. <laughs> um, it's weird how companies you guys have phones? mobile. <laughs> uh, the, the community, sorry, the meme uh, number three seems to have uh, the memes have oh. appeared in the background. I don't know why. Right. Weird. Uh, the third community shout out is Equinox and Protea Deluxe by Volley. Oh, oh. I love it. Yeah. Sure that. That's so cool. As, as one of the as one of the five Equinox mains out there. <laughs> I haven't <laughs> seen haven't seen it with any other like Warframe content creator. Is it just me? Am I the only one playing Equinox? Ah, I honestly can't tell you. Might be. Uh, the fourth community shout out is this Excalibur Tenogen work in progress oh. by Crowling Hasmot. Have we had them on before? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I know. <sighs> oh, okay, good. Oh, it's a complete joke. I sat next to him for the last Tenocon breakfast. Do you remember? No, because I wasn't there. No, but I told you in the episode about it. <laughs> yeah, but I know you. You do ask legitimate questions of have we had them on before. <laughs> Once I remember. Can't tell with you. Right. <laughs> uh, the fifth community shout out Ooh. is, I believe this to be Sentient Ballas by Silfix. Ooh. Or Sentient Pope Ballas with his Pope hat. Pope stick. Mm. Yeah, that weapon is weird. That's awesome. It's, in, it's indicate how popey he is. Yeah. And then uh, our sixth community shout out is Banshee by Cleo Natterin. Have we had them on the show? Yes. <laughs> See, this is what I mean. I can't. I know that. Being... <laughs> <laughs> Man, I'm just. I just get so envious when I see stuff like this. I used to to draw and illustrate a lot when I was younger. Yeah. And I always sort of think to myself like. If I just kept at it, mm. could I also have done stuff like this today? I will never know. You've got to do like, an I think, an hour a day or something. So to make sure you're yeah. doing it all the time, always improving. Even if you're just doodling, you've got to keep doing oh, it. Oh, yeah. When you look at a picture like this, this is like 10,000 hours of practice behind it. This is... 
the thing for me uh. is like when artists go this is the first drawing i ever did okay. this is a drawing i did today and it's like it's 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 freaking night and day in terms of difference. And like, oh yeah, that was only a couple of years ago. I'm like, no, you're fucking lying. You are lying to me. You did that when you were two. Don't lie to me. <laughs> you 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 paid some poor person, some poor invalid child, to make this yeah. first picture just to trick me. But you don't you don't want to hear it because that means that this could be me as well if yes, I had yeah. put in effort. And yeah. I don't want to hear that. Yeah, I don't want to hear that. <laughs> you know, just say I'm you're a prodigy. For love God. <laughs> yeah, I just, you know, this is my first picture ever. You know, I just doodled. Yeah. You know. Right. No, okay. that is that okay. one is just. Uh, oh, look at it. Beautiful. Yep. Put away the community shoutouts. Putting away the community shoutouts. Nick, it has been absolutely amazing having you on. It's been great to be on. Had uh, a fun time. Excellent. I'm glad you did. We will make sure that uh, all your socials, Lars has preemptively hit the button. I think Fine. I should at this point. I think I should because we're, we're kind of, yeah, this is the time yeah, to hit it. Yeah, yeah we're but... wrapping up. But we'll make sure all your socials are in. Yeah, I just remembered. I, I, I never got to do like a sort of a shout out or something in, <laughs> earlier in the episode about that. We'll, what's called? Twitter? Yes, no. We got, we got we got Twitter. We got we got two star players on Twitter. I do have a Twitch account. I very rarely stream, but it, it's there. It's yep. uh, two star players Nick. Yeah. Other than that, it's just you know, YouTube.com slash slash two star players. Okay. Yeah, we'll get make sure that they're all on there. Everyone, go check out Nick. Uh, very excellent, cool dude to have on. Very excellent, cool dude indeed. Thank you. Um, and uh, yeah, we will see you all next time. Bye. Bye, everyone. Peace out.